Good, good. How are you going there, mate? Good. Good to see you. That's good. good to see you as well. And what time is it for you in, in America? It's it, 9 o'clock, did you say? It is It is now 9.50 a.m. 9, 9.50. Okay. So I'm an hour late then because we were supposed to go 9 o'clock your time. Yeah, it's, I think daylight savings screws up the, uh, the GMT it, plus 5. I think it's technically GMT plus 4 for this current six months and then, oh, and then it goes it's back. Crazy. So it's Google crazy. Google screwed it? me. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, it's a t- I've actually left some of the analog um, clocks in my home. I just leave them now. <laughs> just so what? Change it? Um, you know, I, I can recognize it's one hour in advance when when it's really not, you know. Do they, do, do, they do daylight savings in Australia as well? Yeah, we do. And it's really uh-huh. weird because we do in Mel- um, Victoria, um, New South Wales and South Australia, I think Northern Territory. But there are a few states that don't. So it gets very confusing. And, you know, some of their... Their theory behind that was, um, I think, in Queensland, they used the farmers used to complain because, oh no, it'll disrupt the cows, and mm. the, then they had, I think, you know, old wives' tales like um, the curtains would stain because there would be too much light in the day, just <laughs> stupid things. So they didn't adhere to daylight savings because of, um, you know, crazy yeah. old rather wives rather tales. than change the curtains, let's just change the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, cra- just crazy, insane, and that it's, it never really made sense to me. Um, I guess you know, but you know, when you're younger, the whole nothing made sense, right? Because the, it didn't make sense, even the seasons, and even um, yeah, you know, going to the daylight saving thing, all of that never made sense to me. Like, why are you doing that for? Why are you adjusting it? And I wonder whether there, there is some nefarious purpose behind it now, because the people would have would have you know um, realize the deception, um, had they not adjusted these crazy time zones, when you look at them, they don't even make sense on, on a sphere whatsoever. Um, and, you know, you would have seen there was a, um, a, a few weeks ago, there was a situation where 99% of the world was had sunlight at the same time. Did you see that article? No, I didn't see that uh, one. Yeah, 99% of the world realised sunlight at the same time. And it was places like Australia didn't have sunlight. California didn't, which is really odd because the rest of America didn't, did, but California was in darkness. Australia was in darkness. It, but it makes sense if you look at it on a Gleason's map with a, you know, a light projecting over, over it, it makes far more sense. And there was a video that I saw that someone actually demonstrated it, both using a sphere and whether it would cover 99% of the sphere or whether it could cover 99% of the land on a Gleason's map. And it made far more sense on a Gleason's map. So well, on a globe, there should be no angle mm-hmm. that you should be mm-hmm. able to get any more than 50% sunlight at any time of day, right? I mean, no at matter how it's day. spinning or where it is positioned, the, the way tilt. that globe model, the heliocentric model works, yeah, yeah no matter the tilt, no matter what, yeah. you're only going to get 50%. Whereas with a flat Earth, of course, depending on where the sun is positioned and uh, how the rays go out, then yeah, you could feasibly get up to 100%, I guess. But uh, and with it, makes you, and it yeah. makes you wonder on both model models, why doesn't that occur all the time? Yeah. So there's a, it seems there's a certain um, part, you know, this sky clock has certain, you know, perpetual parts that just keep occurring every who knows how long. And the, the thing is now with modern technology, we're able to to analyze it and say, okay, it, this is happening in all these countries. But a hundred years ago, or even two, you know, I was going to say two, three hundred years ago, but even uh, even one hundred years ago, communications were at the point now where you know when when one media um, station reports something, then another. Well, we know how how coordinated that is anyway, but. Um, you know, the technology has superseded their lie. Let's, right. let's put it that way. Yeah. Yet they, they try to pro, pro-rate them. They try to say that like uh, Eratosthenes 2,500 years ago somehow was able to communicate with exact accuracy with someone 500 miles away to be able to tell the exact length of their shadows at the exact same time of day. So they must have been sending like notes to, to really fast pigeons just pigeons like, and <laughs> communicating back and forth. It's just creating, you know, the, and those stories like I, I'm Greek. I've got a, I'm, I'm Greek heritage. My parents are both Greek and we're never taught that sort of crap. Right. 
you know, you know, everyone goes, oh, the Greeks, this, you know, not really, because even my parents are very, and I speak with my uncles and many Greek people, and it's not, it wasn't scientifically, you know, um, proven as everyone accepted it. No, not at all. Exactly. And if you go back to the Bible, like go back to the Greek Orthodox Bible, it never mentions a, a, a sphere whatsoever. And it's based on a geocentric system. And that's what most of the Greeks actually believed at the time, you know, Plato and um, you had many, many um, philosophers who were always questioning the shape of the earth beneath their feet and what was occurring. And it was usually, and if you look at many devices that were built by the Greeks, the Antikythera device, the astrolabe, they were built on a foundation of a geocentric, you know, they're held planular, planner, aren't they? You hold right. them flat right. and everything moves above you. And so this notion that the Greeks, because of Eratosthenes or, you know, um, how you know you could people pronounce it in very various ways, um, but he wasn't a very well known Greek, and I think it's been mentioned on a few channels that his name didn't appear till you know till most recently, I, I'd say, um, you know, but you people use him as empirical proof. Let's trust the guy two and a half thousand years ago with sticks and shadows. <laughs> And, and the story is just preposterous when you dive into it. And I think I wrote about it briefly in my book because when I started, you know, I, I wanted to debunk Flat Earth like everyone else did, you know, that, that story you hear. And one of those was the Eratosthenes experiment. So looking at, at the varying um, stories, you know, sticks and shadows, then you'll get someone else, oh, he used an obelisk. Well, was it a stick or was it an obelisk? Oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, it was a well. Well, yeah. What, what a well or is a stick or an obelisk? Right. You know, it, it, it should be documented. Yeah. It keeps changing, doesn't it? Or was it a combination? Sometimes they do use a combination of all three or an obelisk and a, and a well or a stick and a well or something like that. And it's just the story, you know. But if we're really going to look at shadows to measure our environment, that's just insanity because I've right. never done that before. <laughs> Have you? Do you ever go, oh, how long is that? You know, what are the dimensions of this car or the wheels? Let me measure the shadows. You know? <laughs> and it's still like the most oft cited proof when you ask people today, you know, how do you know, you personally know that the earth is a globe? It's like, well, this guy 2,500 years ago, he did this thing with sticks and shadows. So obviously it's a globe. <laughs> it, it must be. I, Either that or the CGI photos and fisheye lens videography from NASA. And, you know, they're convinced. <laughs> it, it's crazy, isn't it? And then they never, and then when you bring up, um, you know, proof using modern day equipment, oh, no, 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 refraction. <laughs> well, did, did Arendtasini's account or, you know, the shadow guy account for refraction? Oh, no, 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 that's different. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. So they, they just want to, you know, cherry pick. And I don't blame them because it's a very hard one to get over the globe, you know, the globe thing and. You know, for me, I, I um, got on the internet, I remember first, you know, getting dial-up, I think it was in 1996, and, you know, the internet wasn't like it is now. You got social media and you got sharing and you got all this, so you had to dig down and find information. And I don't know why, I, I met a guy actually, and he, um, I used to be a salesperson and, uh, and a salesman, and I met a guy, he was probably the first conspiracy theorist I ever met. and. I went to a meeting hoping to sell him something, but the whole two hours were, oh, the military industrial complex. And I didn't even know what that was. He was sitting there telling me how corrupt the military are. And that was probably my first conspiracy theory. I was maybe 25 years old. And again, so when I did di get onto dial up internet and thought, oh, what can I search for? So, sort of, oh, conspiracy theories. And then back then there was, very few websites, as I said, but there were some pretty cool sites compa um, compared to now. But one of the, you know, I went down the rabbit hole of aspartame or aspartame, however you pronounce it, you know, artificial sweetener. And then I remember getting because the moon landings always intrigued me. So I looked into the moon landings and it was a pretty good site then, you know, very vanilla sort of site, but laid out all the arguments um, about the moon landings. So I was fully aware of the moon landings being fake for like probably since 1996, 97. And then coming across Flat Earth 
you know what, in 2014. I can't believe I was so brainwashed, right? I knew NASA was lying about the moon landings, but I just, just couldn't accept that they would lie about or could lie. Like it's a, you know, it's a variation of that question, why would they lie? How could they lie? You know, when did they start lying? There's the, you know, the wet, how, when, why, who, you know, that thing we do as children. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't believe that, that I was, you know, really, you know, hardcore globe earther and I hated flat earth. I just, the concept of it really just, you know, just didn't gel with me to start with. And I think it was because I felt that society would regress if we, you know, went to this stone age thinking of the earth was flat and, you know, even though I didn't know anything about it, which is crazy. And that's I was going to ask what, you how. That's what they kind of propagate out there, isn't it? Is that the idea of a flat earth was believed by our, our stupid ancient ancestors, but then our smart modern thinkers, starting with Christopher Columbus and everyone, you know, thereafter, Copernicus and, and Galileo and Newton, and these are like the forefathers of modern science. So they, they teach us this and subconsciously it feels that way. It's like, well, if this thing were true, the flat earth, then that would mean that all of the greatest thinkers, you know, in modern history were wrong yeah. or, or, or bigger than that, were part of some conspiracy to delude us all. And it just seems far too vast and involved to even be possible. And I had the same thoughts when I was first looking into flat earth books and everything in the back of my mind, because you want to cut it off your lips, like tick it off your conspiracy theory list. It's like, you know, you look at JFK, like you said, aspartame, yeah. moon landings, yeah. got it. And then you come up to flat earth and you're like, well, that's so ridiculous that I should be able to tick that one off pretty fast. So let's, let's just go for it. And you look into it and the, the things, the way they talk about it, it's direct measurement and, you know, actual mathematics and observation and empiricism being used versus when you watch a NOVA or NASA or whatever G National Geographic documentary that has nothing but CGI and all this imaginative language and, you know, all these planets spinning by you and stars and, and it, compared to what I'm reading in the Flat Earth book, it's like, this is bare bones. This is like uh, if I was doing construction or something versus, uh, you know, the NASA stuff, which is like, this is like fantasy, science fiction, Star Wars, Star Trek type of stuff. And so which one are you going to use when you're actually trying to find out, you know, what's going on here? Actual direct measurements, observations, mathematics, or this imaginative stuff. And they're, they're mixing mathematics into it as well. So they, but they have the weirdest unprovable math. So they'll say things like, oh yeah, we know that this star is so and so far away because of the color of the light that we receive from it. And if it's a certain shade of red versus a certain shade of blue, they determine whether it's coming towards us or moving away from us. And they have all of these supposed, and then math, based on this color theory. <laughs> which is, So if you can have a totally internally consistent mathematical model based on the heliocentric system and have your, you know, nerdiest mathematician confirm that, yes, all the mathematics works, but that doesn't mean that it applies to reality. You're basing that, it on, exactly right. on something like, oh, color change, therefore 1.7356 because this you know level of hue change between the red shift and the blue shift so the, yeah they got math but you know it's not based on anything versus the math that you're seeing in the flat earth books which takes okay a globe two, uh, 24,900 miles in circumference you know using the pythagorean theorem you have to have a certain amount of curvature per mile exponential and then you see it all worked out and then through observation, you can see that the necessary curvature is not there, and you can do these experiments for yourself at, at altitude, at sea level, and you can see, you know, now they've gone up, you know, up to 120,000 feet in amateur balloons, and they're able to see hundreds and hundreds of miles in all directions. The horizon rises all the way up with the camera the whole way, and is still flat all the way around. 
And Absolutely. It's case closed right there because if the Earth is a globe, then the curvature, the elusive curve, is physical. And it would be going downwards from you, from where you're standing. Just the fact that the horizon seems to go up, right? You look at the ground and it's at your feet, but then you look straight ahead and the horizon is at your eye line, even at sea level. Well, that tells you right there that the horizon is an optical illusion. It's not the physical curvature of a globe. If it was the physical curvature of a globe, you would never, even at sea level, be able to see the horizon at your eye level. It would be below your feet level, of course. But we already, know, we already know that perspective works that way because when you look at a road or a train track, they converge into a point. And we know that that never happens and the, the roads don't suddenly get narrower and narrower until they end at the horizon. No, it's an optical illusion. The road is, is parallel. The train tracks are parallel the whole way. Same with the sky seeming to ramp downwards. You see a, a plane, it's going straight, but from our view, it seems to go down, down, down towards the horizon, just like everything on the ground goes up towards the horizon. So this is all the nature of perspective. And yeah. globe earthers, like somewhere in the back of their mind, they know this. They, and they know it. They try to accept it and also not accept it because the earth has to be a globe. So, so, uh, uh. but the reality is, you know, wrap your mind around it. If you go up 20 miles and the horizon is rising with you the whole way, it is not the physical curvature of a globe. This is an optical illusion of perspective that follows us everywhere we go. So when you talk Absolutely. about ships disappearing over the horizon or whatever, they're not disappearing over the physical curvature of a globe. They're disappearing because they've passed the vanishing point of perspective. And we're not taught perspective unless you go to art school. And so most people, they're just taught their uh, heliocentric astronomy in fifth grade or whatever, and they never learn about perspective until a flat earther comes along and tells them about the law of perspective, which has always been the law of perspective until about the past 10 years. Have you come across this? When the detractors say, that's not a law. Perspective is not a law. It's like, well, call it what you want but it works 100% of the time and it's never not in operation. And that's the definition of a law versus say the law of gravity, which nowadays is the main law people wanna talk about, which is just a theory because it's not apparent anywhere at all. The only thing that you can actually see is the effects of density and buoyancy. It has nothing to do with a mythical pulling force uh, attracting things to the center of massive objects. Nowhere apparent, supposedly a law, but they can't give you a single example that you can demonstrate. There's not oh, a single mass. object on Earth large enough to attract the smallest object on Earth to it. You know, no matter That's what the, big, the biggest building, the Burj Khalifa or whatever you want to think of, the biggest structure we could possibly build is not doesn't doesn't produce enough gravity to even attract a dust bunny to it. Yet everybody believes that it's a law that all things operate based on. Yet when you say law of perspective, they're like, that's not a law. That's not a law. But the and, law of gravity is. And they'll even refer to gravity as a force of gravity when, you know, a simple search says, no, it's not a force, right? <laughs> and, it, and even if it was a force, it would be the weakest force in the universe because you've got electromagnetic forces, which, you know, I think are like 3,000 times stronger or something like that. But the point you made about our eyes is the most important one, isn't it? And, I, you know, I think that's why I started my book with trying to wrap, you know, getting the the um, the reader to sort of go, okay, that's how our eyes work. But look, at, look down a railway track, a hallway or a highway, and you'll see that it, it, you'll see this converging lines. And interesting enough, if you have two railway tracks side by side, the same thing occurs. So your eye is processing this at, you know, it's the most, our mind is the most, we'll get, get there later, but um, our mind is so complex that it can determine it from not only, um, a par you know, parallel or looking horizontally, but if you're standing at a top, at, say at the top of a skyscraper and looking down, it occurs looking down. If you're standing at the bottom of a building looking upward, I hope I'm not breaking up um, with the microphone. You're looking up, the same thing is occurring as well, where the buildings seem to converge. And it's so, 
our eyes are the mirror to this to our soul as they say and if you go back you know without you know going to the greek thing all the time which i probably will um but if you go back to greek classical art you can see the difference when they didn't understand perspective because you'll see those they drew people and it was that side view you know their eye was here and they never you know what i mean but later we realized how we could draw because you know even drawing a facial the 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 feature the facial features requires understanding of perspective and this ramping up of objects and ramping down or this conical vision that we have and i've often thought about it because it's so smart you know that the intelligent creator had to do that because just imagine if it wasn't imagine if you're standing on a flat surface as we are but then you couldn't it didn't have that ramping i'm not going to explain it well but i just want people to sort of visualize what would happen if you were just standing on the ground and didn't have objects disappearing smaller what are they small you know what i mean in the distance mm. as they go further and this whole there's actually a i've got a download here back here but there's a book called the geometry of visibles and i'm trying to read through it it's very deep but as you said they didn't teach us this at school beyond basic art class and even if you were in art class you would never i never really saw anyone go oh well we just drew which i remember doing because i really enjoyed art and doing perspective drawing but you never really went outside and went, the earth can't be a sphere look at what this right because we just didn't and you just you know even coming out with that sort of thinking you know because of our brainwashing and let's face it pete you know you leaving or when i left school I was 50, 16 or whatever that was only several years after I stopped believing in Santa Claus. <laughs> You're right. So how educated we think we're so smart when we leave school and oh know it all and you know how old were you when you realized the earth was flat? I was always skeptical. So I, I was I was skeptical of the globe from the minute it was presented. I guess but, I uh, was too, but I just didn't want to face it. Yeah, but <laughs> right. What about yeah, you, when you, you kind of you get along to go along throughout schooling because yeah. that's what you're told. That's what the textbooks teach you. All the science teachers, the science programs, your parents, everyone accepts it. So to me, it felt kind of like trauma-based mind control in the sense that you compartmentalize it and stash it away, and you never really <laughs> think about it again because it's. It, it was one of these things similar to Santa Claus, I guess, where it doesn't really make sense. But for the time being, everyone's going along with it. So what are you going to do? You're going to. So it must you, be true. You, yeah, I mean, it just. Who am I? Yeah. Right, right. And as, especially at that age, you really don't have the internal fortitude to stand up to all adults in the world and be like, no, my, my sense is, my, you know, what makes sense to me is stronger than all of you adults. And I will stand firm in that. You're like, you don't even have the lived experience to, to do that. You just have an inkling like. This doesn't make any sense to me, but everyone says it's true and everyone acts like it's true. And if I act otherwise, it's a problem. It's an issue. So you just stop. And isn't that how trauma basically works? You compartmentalize it, put it away, and then you don't think about it again until something triggers it. And then it becomes like this, this Pandora's box in your mind that gets opened. And that's what it was for me with Flat Earth right. when, it, when I yeah. finally came across it again when I was about... 25 i was like huh there's there is information there still out there about this i need to get get into it and it took me years of reading these old flat earth books and looking into because before although nasa wasn't formed yet so i was getting answers for questions that uh, someone in the 1860s could answer for me but uh since NASA was formed and all, all of these, you know, the globe images and what about this mission and what about these videos and all that. So then I had to try and do my own deep research online through video stuff and finding anyone that was on YouTube talking about it or there was websites for the moon landing stuff. So you just try to piece all together all the questions that you have that, you know, everybody else is going to have as well because you can't. You can't really come out and believe or or even feel like you're in a space of knowing 
until you have answered every single question that is in the back of your mind that mm. that um, you know it is, pertains to that subject or that could be asked about that subject. And at that time, it was really difficult to be able to do that process. So it took me years to get to that point. But but there was a time when I felt you know sitting there and I was just like I have done it now. I've answered every single question I can think of, and I'm now 100% sure the Earth is flat. NASA's lying. We've never been to the moon. All of these things and. It's like, okay, and that's when I started writing my book and started getting on everything. But before that, it was just a, a time of compiling everything and making sure that this is reality yeah. so that I, I'm standing on a, a real foundation and not just some, you know, something that I only 90% sure about or something. Likewise, um, because I remember um, it might have been 2007, you know, eight or nine or something. I remember getting into Hollowworth. Someone said Hollowworth and that was intriguing, you know, mm. Admiral Bird gone through, you know, into this other world. And I think I posted that online and people were like, oh, uh -huh. but they didn't laugh as much. And it was more acceptable than the earth is flat. And even yes. for me, it was like, oh, cool. You know, yeah, that's wow. Amazing. You know, it just for some reason, it just made sense. This guy went into the center of the earth, like the earth's like hot, you know, like a, what is it? Um, the traditional a, hollow earth model has a crazy second sun Agatha inside yeah, on the, yeah. in the inside and so it's hollowed out and you can enter from the north or south pole of the globe yes. and which in, i don't know how that would stuff. work with with gravity and all that stuff and spinning and now you're spinning on the inside rather than the out you know <laughs> on the outside of the ball right. and just you, know, you don't get in you know but i remember posting that um and you know, as I said, there wasn't hardly any ridicule, but when you, you know, but even when I did, and I came across Flat Earth on a, through a Facebook page, a post that someone did, uh, you know, around early 2014, I reckon it was, and whoa, that was feisty, because everyone got in on this guy, like, what do you mean, you're, you know, you're an idiot, and I kind of felt sorry for him, and he disappeared, and he, you know, I lost some friends over that just by, you know, guilt by association sort of thing, and, um, and then, I left it and it was maybe four or five months and just kept, you know, people kept mentioning, I was like, oh, shit, man, you know, I've got to debunk this. This has got to get debunked, you know, and I'm Greek and that Greek guy did the shadow experiment. You know, Pythagoras was Greek. I can prove that, the, you know, be a modern day guy to prove the earth is a ball. And that's where I, you know, with his stubborn, you know, attitude and ego behind me. Because I'd seen, the, and it, you know, years before I'd seen even be well before Flat Earth, you know, that spiraling video with the earth chasing the sun and all that and i was like wow look at that and i'd show my kids and try and sound smart and, you know so i knew how fast the, the the alleged earth um you know the 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 spin of the earth the spin around the sun i didn't realize the sun was actually you know five hundred thousand miles an hour through the universe as well and the expansion theory too but yeah, I dive down and oh, I've got to debunk this. This can't be, you know, when, as I said before, we're not going to go down this path. And I, I would say that what, um, like you, I wasn't prepared just to take anything as proof, though, by any side, because I was listening to the globe earth arguments and looking at the way they would ridicule was really putting me off the research, mm. going, oh, you, you know, you, you're dumb, you're this. It's like, hang on, we can't do this. It's not the way you, you know. And then you'd say, especially when these people are doing high altitude balloon tests, they're doing long distance video. What are you guys doing? Nothing, but you're calling mm -hmm. them dumb. Mm -hmm. So I was starting to sort of hang on, you know, getting to the the middle ground, sitting, you know, in the middle, um, sitting on the fence, if you like. And that's not good because you know that's a dangerous position position <laughs> to hold. So then um, I just had to get it go outdoors. And I think the like you said, it's the reading, it's the experience as well. So you know one minute they're saying oh you can only see so far but then you go outside and you can see a mountain range 100 200 kilometers away or 150 uh, miles away you've got to question yourself what's going how come i can see so far so i'm seeing well beyond the curvature of the earth and then you your brain will just go well, maybe the earth is just bigger than what what we've been told and that wrecks everything as well because if it's bigger then it needs to spin faster to complete a daily revolution the whole gravitational mechanics just falls apart just yeah. right there, doesn't it? The idea yeah. that Eratosthenes calculated the yeah. exact circumference of the Earth with the sticks and go. shadows, there goes that. Yeah. 
There goes the idea that NASA, with its rockets that are, you know, clearly just curving and going, falling into the ocean. No, no, they're going around the globe Earth because they know exactly the circumference of the globe Earth so that they can slingshot up and do the same thing when they're coming back from the moon. So it wrecks so everything. It wrecks everything. But, it but wrecks exactly, everything. everybody goes to that. It's like, well, maybe the Earth is, is 10 times bigger than they said or 100 times bigger than they said. It's like. Okay, well then, you know, if that was the case, then you should at least throw away everything they've said then because you're admitting that they're completely wrong anyway. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, so, so water water doesn't level, it just uh, level, you know, a hundred miles. <laughs> it's a it's hundred times a bigger globe, but eventually water still curves for no reason. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that the, the globe is just bigger. Uh, yeah when you really think about it but of course our brains want to go there we want to well how can this how can we still work within the model that i i've you know believed that, for so my, long my fairy tale belief yeah i just want to hold on to that just let me hold on to it for a little bit it's not it's not my longer. dad it's not my dad yeah. in a santa claus suit he, he doesn't have a white beard i mean he couldn't wear a fake beard could he, he maybe he could wear a fake beard <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. This, yeah exactly we did go to kmart to you know that night and yeah, right. I, I have got that gift that i saw at kmart and, you know <laughs> then you know, it's hard to sort of quantify you know to quantify all of that but even with er eratosthenes with his supposed experiment because you know an experiment should be conducted three times i was always i was always taught at school you can't just go out once and do this experiment and no one else did it ever since this should be a you know a, a repeatable demonstrable experiment conducted all the time if it was the case but if what he did was true and he measured a radius well if the sun is circling us that's going to have a radius as well an arc radius which is mm. what he, he there's nothing else he could have measured right so technically you probably can measure through certain locations the sun arcing because of the shadow i don't know if it's you know been done anywhere but a radius a circle has a radius a sphere has a radius as well it's the same it, you know it's that same um I, I heard someone bring up you know you might hear this argument where you know you'll say oh the earth spins a thousand miles an hour or they that's what they tell us that's it. but now a lot of the globe earthers have have brought that back and gone oh no no it's only zero zero so it's only zero point zero 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 one rpm or something like that because that's, you know, take a wheel and then spin that wheel. Well, the sphere, our Earth is not a wheel, it's a sphere. And a sphere and a wheel are two different things. The dynamics behind it, the mechanics behind it as well. Because on a, on a sphere, as you know, the equator, the equatorial speed is larger or greater than the speed at, say, in America, North Pole. And you don't have that on a, on a wheel as such that they're trying to say it's only the RPM thing now, like a clock goes around once a day and you won't feel this. So, yeah, exactly. that, so they're on, just... a, on a globe, it's a thousand miles per hour at the equator. And then say at the mid latitudes, now you're only going about 500 miles per hour. And then at the North Pole, you're going zero miles per hour, <laughs> just, you know, pirouetting slowly like that. And then as you gain altitude, you have to gain, because they say that the entire atmosphere and everything in it is also stuck to the spinning ball Earth. And that's why when you go up in a hot air balloon for 12 hours, you don't come down in China. You come down right where you were, because supposedly the entire atmosphere and everything like gel is just spinning right along with it. But that means that at, say, you know, t uh, five miles high, 10 miles high, well, Guess how fast you have to be going now to the point that when they're at the International Space Station that's supposedly up there, something like 200 miles high, they got to be going 17,500 miles per hour at all times just to keep up with this supposed spinning ball Earth and atmosphere that they're in. And of course, that keeps going to some undetermined altitude that they don't even tell us. So at some point, the spinning atmosphere that's going over 20,000 miles per hour, allegedly, if you get to that point, and apparently they did because they've gone to the moon and Mars and wherever else, whatever craft they're in has to pop out of this amazingly fast spinning atmosphere into 
non-spinning, non-gravitized, non-atmosphere of outer space. Where? What is the point that that happens? How could that possibly happen? How could it attract thing, the atmosphere like gel and everything in it so perfectly, but then there's this it, one point that you escape from you start, and then you oh, reach into outer, outer yeah. space? Or are you saying that it's not like that and it just slowly, the, the atmosphere slowly starts to release things to an undetermined rate? But at the height of the ISS, line. everything and, and geocentric, uh, geostationary satellites and everything, those are all spinning right perfectly with the Earth uh, at the correct latitude, too. Like I said, if you're at the mid latitudes in the north, well, then it's very different from the equator or right over the, the poles. And they, they think that this math just works fine with planes taking off and landing and going in all different directions all the time. If, if, if there was all of these speeds at different latitudes and altitudes that had to be taken into account for, for planes, there would be no pilot that could ever navigate, take off, or land on, on a single runway on an Earth spinning that. It would be completely ridiculous. But N nobody thinks Neil, about it. Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, I saw a video, I think I put it on my YouTube channel um, a few days ago, but he's trying to say now that the earth is spinning and you know we all because he's trying to justify the tides and he said oh forget what you've been taught at school about tides it's not the moon it's not this it's we are spinning into the water he said so picture the water as a solid and the earth spins so we're spinning and because we go into the bulge area and we we're it's just insanity and the guy looked at him and he's going, really? He's like, yeah, you know, and you know, you know, when Neil's like trying to act all friggin' sophisticated. And like, when did that change, Eric? Because right. I didn't realize I that changed. That. Did oh, you he's change? Always you know? coming, he's doing that all the time. He's Neil comes crazy. up with these little metaphors, I think, when, he, on his, when he's in the shower or on his way to bed, and he's just like, <laughs> I'm going to say that the field goal that the football <laughs> kicked because it missed was because of the Coriolis effect and the spin of the Earth. Had nothing to do with the actual kick or the wind speed or anything like that. No, no. It was the spin of the Earth. Unbelievable. That and he tweets crazy. about the, it and, and he Cincinnati goes on interviews Tigers, talking about it. Yeah. yeah, I think that was the Cincinnati Tigers, wasn't it? And, you know, the deflection of the Earth like, caused the just to skim by. And he sure shows nailed. a picture of it. And, yeah, sure, sure, sure it did. But, you know, um, these long distant, long, um, you know, ski jumpers that go down the mountain, they target out they go like a thousand you know a thousand feet or something do they have to account for this deflection <laughs> well just wait Does for one of them to, to to radically alter their course and neil will neil will be on his podcast telling you exactly why yeah. i'm sure oh, you know <laughs> maybe because he said you know because of the alignment of the field was I, I checked the lateral and the you know lateral position and the of the field and yes it was exactly in line and then do, 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 i did you know it's just like such a freaking isn't it is he embarrassed by his own words, just listening to himself? But, you know, can I just go back, just rewind a little bit? Because he made a really good point before about, you know, when we are too young to go, well, who am I to question it? And then you'll probably get to an age and go, hang on a sec. Well, even if I do question this gravity mm -hmm. thing that they're telling me um, in on Australia, spinning around, stuck upside down, is that the same gravity as the gravity in America? Like, why does it react differently or whatever? But even let's say you do that you know, you immediately, you know, you're going to be dumbed down by your peers. Oh, you just don't understand it. Don't you know that vast math, you know, they go back to that argument. So you you just shy away from it. Um, that's why I sort of asked you, you know, what age you were, because it's very critical, you know, you know, being too young, you're not going to get out. Being too old, you won't do it as well, because then you've got a career behind you. You don't want to lose clients, your job, your, you know, if you're a pilot going out and saying, the earth is flat, right? Like and questioning it. it. So and there's it's more trauma again. So like I said, mm. it was trauma-based mind control when it yeah. was introduced to you as a child. You compartmentalized about it, forgot about it for a while. And then when it's brought up again and you want to do anything besides just ponder it for yourself, meaning talk to your friend, your family, anyone yeah. about it, you're going to get more trauma now. You're going to get more trauma. Yeah, for sure. The, more trauma. All, all because... these abused Stockholm syndrome victims around you are going to see you standing up to the abuse and they're all going to be like stop it stop it, it feels and they're, like and they're going to give you more trauma to make you yeah, yeah. sit right back down they're going to you know ad hominem attack you and do all of these logical fallacies to take down your argument most of them are based on your character 
Well, the fact, how could you possibly believe that? Why would they do that? They'll come at you with incredulous uh, attitude, and suddenly you are the crazy guy, and oh. friends, family, you've known your entire life will now treat you totally differently because, I mean, that is trauma. That's very traumatic and it's unfair. And yeah. it should be a sign to people to take note. Like, to take even, note. Even, even if this thing was true, like, even if Flat Earth is the dumbest thing ever and the globe is reality, why are we treating people who are questioning it like that? Yeah. Do yeah. we do, we do so that true. with with all other fringe groups so and true. minorities? That, is that accepted for that, minorities? That's, exa that's exactly right. That's exactly where I was going to go. That in a world of don't bully people, don't right. do that, don't right. say that, that boy wants to wear a dress, don't leave, you know, leave me alone. Oh, but flat earthers, rah, rah yeah. unleash the beast towards them, right? <laughs> right? Unleash the kraken, you know, go get them. Doesn't matter what you say. Because even on, on Twitter, you know, if there's, you know, w there's a discussion in Australia about um, allowing the Aboriginal Indigenous community, you know, into the constitution. So if I go and comment on any of that, People go, and I might make a pretty good, co a pretty darn good comment. But people then go to my profile, go, "Oh, he's a flat earther." Come back, go, "Oh, but you're a flat earther. What would you know anyway?" You know. But I, I think the tides are turning because then I get people coming in, going, "Oh, well, the Earth could be flat." And I think, you know, like credit to you, like you're, you know, like known to, uh, to be a champion in this cause for how many years, right? In a lot of different topics, but in particular, flat Earth. Um, I think there's a tipping point and it's coming soon. Yeah, I think that tipping point of what you said, the, you know, people go, oh, hang on, don't they question why he's being bullied and, and for so long? Because I've been, you know, publicly seven, eight years as a flat earther. And now I actually get a lot of my friends who first pointed the, oh, 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 did all that at the pub or whatever, you know, that was feisty situation. A lot of them now are like flat earthers. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And I love that, you know, and you see just, that, you know, because they see, I think most people do, uh, you know, um, I think what we went through in the last two and a half years, two and a half, I don't know if we can bring up the, you know, lockdown, all that sort of, if you want to talk about that, but that opened a lot of people's eyes, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, wow, there can be a worldwide government. I watched your video today on the New World Order one that you just put out. And if you put that out, if they, people saw that five years ago, no way, well, you, it's there now. They've heard their government say the New World Order. And you wouldn't believe the amount of times uh, Australian ministers during lockdown going, oh, look, there's a New World Order coming. Just deal with it. Mm. So what? He said it. And the lady, another minister, female one, would say it. And it's like, what? This has been dropped too often. You know, that was what really weird how they, you know, they, maybe they thought they were in the lot, you know, they were going to win the game and they mm -hmm. just like got a bit too cocky and started mm. going out with all these shit until they realised the narrative is folding. It's not working, man. And, but to hear, um, you know, to see what happened and then these people go, well, how could they lie? How could all governments lie about shape? They're like, really? Didn't you just mm -hmm. see what happened? Right. right. <laughs> all of them forced everyone in the world to stay indoors for Two a weeks. determined amount. Of, yeah. Yeah. Like, and you're going to say that how could all of the governments be in cahoots about some something? Like, well, there you go. Now you've seen it. How I can that it. be your main defense against looking into flat earth or other government conspiracies if you think that multiple governments can't be in on it? Well, they can, they're in lockstep on this thing that you can clearly, I mean, you can, you can research the heck out of this and you're going to find it's nonsense. And everyone went in lockstep over this nonsense. So, you know, that is no longer a valid excuse for, for they, literally and, any conspiracy theory that involves a, a worldwide uh, definitely, group. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And, and you wonder, you know, like when you look at this group that just, you know, perp you know perpetrate this on, onto us, they're not that big. It's not that big a group compared mm -hmm. to us, right? right. Only, you know, well, you know, 10,000 people, what we do, it's nothing, man, you right. know? It's not a football stadium of a, I mean, the top level people. I, I wouldn't even say it's 10,000, mm -hmm. probably exaggerated there. But um, what about people at the top level space program? What, 10,000? Not even again, would you right. say? No, not, not even. Not really, no.
there's only 500 plus people that have claimed to have been in outer space. So that's, you know, as far as lying about that, you only that. need about 500 people signing NDAs and sworn oaths as Masons. You know, that, that was the ancient version was they had these Masonic rituals and every degree you rise, you have to swear gruesome oaths about if you ever divulge these secrets of masonry let let my tongue be cut out at the root let my intestines be pulled out and strung over and, my neck all yeah. of these things and you have to say this you know blindfolded and, and in a ritualistic setting amount around all your brothers and at one point they ha all have swords uh, at your throat while you're saying this now and so there's that and that still happens to this day all masons do this and they sign NDAs. They sign non-disclosure agreements that are their legal counterpart. Well, high level, so you yeah, are not just your normal NDA. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you are I legally mean, I mean, bound to your lies, and you are, you know, at, at the threat of your life, you have done rituals that you personally have sworn an oath not to divulge these secrets. So when people being like, how could they possibly keep the, the that a secret? You don't even know. A, you probably never heard what an NDA is because these are in, used in government all the time and corporations. And corporations, yeah. And second, you probably never heard of secret societies and how they function and how they swear blood oaths uh, every degree they rise through these gruesome uh, rituals. And that, that's still happening today along with the non-disclosure agreement. So I, I have the opposite question. Who are these people you think are going to go against entire worldwide secret societies and legal non-disclosure agreements after they've already they're the type of people that are compromisable that will sign these things and say these things in these settings and then suddenly you think they're going to have a 180 degree change of heart and then come out somehow and not be killed or put in jail for the rest of their life uh no that's not how it works they definitely they, definitely they and got you know, their uh you know they, they've um cross their T's and dotted their I's, they obviously yeah. know th that this can happen, so they're not going to let someone in on all these secrets that they could so easily divulge and just get out there. And that's why someone like me is is what you need, someone that's on the outside. I've never sworn any of these oaths. I'm not in any of these secret societies. I'm just this nerdy introvert that started reading all these old books, and, and I know how to speed read, so I can go through information faster than most people. And then I came across this thing that nobody's been thinking about for like 150 years, and it's like, hey, Check out these books, and and now you know over these past ten years, we've written our own books and we've you know made our own documentaries and we, we've changed the world and we're continuing to. And I agree, we are getting to the tipping point now. And the the CV nonsense that they just put us through for the last three years woke up a whole new sector of people Didn't that weren't know. weren't ready for this. And I get messages mm. almost every day from yeah. pe from the new people saying these this kind of thing that. Uh, it was the CV nonsense that opened them up. It kind of primed their brain to be ready now to look into deeper conspiracies that before they thought were too big to ponder, to consider. And as I, admit, um, I wonder when I gave some of these, you know, especially there's some new big channels coming out now and, you know, after the you know, CV's gone, it's ended. And I was getting really annoyed during CV because I'd, you know, go on and everyone's talking about lockdown. I'm going, hey, but the earth is flat. And everyone's just ignoring it, just ignoring it. And I, I was like, I remember saying to my sister, oh, the, you know, they're just baby truthers or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, they're, you know, not talking about that. You know, they're just like, um, all, all they want is just make money out of this thing or, you know, whatever, just get the fame out of being the one, you know. But I don't blame them, right? Because now I see a lot of them coming out, right? And I wonder if it's sometimes a bad idea to mix the two together, like oil and water, you know, like if you're on this topic, just stick to that, right? Is it gutsy to go and, you know, oh, and you hey, CV's a lie, and the earth is flat. It's mm. like, whoa, that's very, you know, abrupt for people. You know, people just can't comprehend these two big grand lies, mm -hmm. right? And this one, the, the, the globe lie is bigger than that one. Way bigger, right? In my eyes, anyway, um, because there's been, you know, just the, the, the causes, the devastating causes that it's done to humanity, I reckon, has been immeasurable just to stupefying man to think that he could live on a ball is enough to sort of bring down society to a point of they're not thinking about and realizing the real dynamics of the world is there an ether is there free energy is there more land is there 
a lot of questions that, you know. I think it's, you, it's really... You'd eliminate the liars, wouldn't you, if you don't, weren't lying about the ball, wouldn't you? Wouldn't know ball earth liars? Like, what are these guys doing with the money? Where's it's, that it's money going? Fundamentally insidious in the sense that they are removing our ability to believe our own common sense and experience, and instead we just have to believe their version of reality, These which, 500 which is nowhere apparent. It's mm. nowhere apparent that yep. the horizon curves somewhere 360 degrees and that you can be standing upside down and planes can go upside down or you can dig a hole to China and find more sky below you. None of these things are anywhere apparent uh, and they're completely against your common sense. They make no sense whatsoever. Even as a child, that was the, you know, the idea of a people standing upside down on a ball, like you'd have to be magnetized to the thing. How could you jump and then and then come back? If you are if you're if you're farther away from the center of attraction that I know. And you're, you're able to break that magnetic attraction, then you, there's nothing that should stop you from continuing off into outer space. What on earth would bring you back to it if you were able to uh, overcome it? It should be like this. You should have to take one foot and, and, then, and it should be very exactly. difficult to yep. put it back down if yep. gravity was a real thing. And the next foot, and it's just try to, maybe you'd even have to slide it across the floor. It'd slide it across the floor and, and then just try to pull up the other one and slide it. And then what would water and, and buildings and everything else look like? It, and the clouds. It would be totally different. And, and, yeah. Yeah, the clouds and the butterflies and the bees and the dust, you know, because, you know, during a, if you get, a, you know, light beaming into your office or your, or your room and you see the dust particles floating through, what happened to gravity right there? Because right, these right. things are just like... Why aren't they just being up? pulled to the and, ground? All you know, the dust particles? I've, I've smoked the green stuff before and I've like, right. oh, oh, far out, look at that. They're just floating <laughs> around. And they're quite miraculous because nothing is still... When you yeah. look at them, everything's moving, and the air is a fluid as well, and it's quite remarkable how, and that's what I was saying, I think we've been stupefied by the fact that we haven't had the ability to look at this remarkable creation that's before us um, the way it should be intended. The thing is, they know it. So why, are they, why do they know it and we don't know it, right? That's like having, you know, you live in a mansion and it's like, 25 rooms your family only knows about four or five of these rooms the rest of it only you know about it would you do that to them and it'd be quite empowering if you did because mm. that night everyone go to bed and you go to this billiard room and the theater room or, you know whatever room and you know you'd feel not that you'd do that to your family it'd be really stupid to feel empowered over but let's say they were strangers and they did not, yeah, but there's this thing of, of they feel that they're empowered over this knowledge over us. And the funny thing is we get attacked for, oh, you know, do you feel special about knowing the flip's flat or something? Oh, what do you mean? You know, you should, a little bit, you should too. Because when you have that realisation that you're not spinning on a ball, that is a grand freaking day. When you connect those dots and you, you know, especially after resistance, and then you go, there's just nothing more. There's nothing more here. I've seen the you know curve. I've you know water lays level over rest. Um, the impossibility of space and the you know having an atmosphere adjacent to a vacuum. Um, pull, go on and on. The way our eyes work. The horizontal ramp, as you said. And pull, you know you could have it. You, you know it, it took me seven months actually to finally have the guts and go look. The I was gonna say look. Even though I knew after like the first couple of days of investigation there's something wrong here, I was like you. I had to know sort of everything, even though you never really can know everything, can you, right? And I think that's part of the acceptance as well, going, you're not going to know everything. We can't know everything. It's just the impossibility of it. Um, but that day was a huge day. I think, you know, every hair on my body just stood on air, you know, like connecting to the ether is like, wow, cry, you know, like, just crazy. Like, imagine if the whole world went through that and we just all went, what? You know, we're mm -hmm. all brothers, we're all sisters, we're all, like, family, effectively. 
because whichever model you believe, you know, whether whichever story you believe, the Adam and Eve story or the evolution story where one man, one thing evolved became two, that's crazier than the Adam and Eve story, whatever, they're both, cra- <laughs> they're both questionable. Mm-hmm. But that means if every offspring became from these two people, then we're all brothers and sisters effectively, regardless of colour, creed, and the, our they, tongue. They always talk about how they need like an off-world enemy to be a unifying factor for humanity. They, they always talk about how you need some kind of alien enemy to unite all of humanity. Well, rather than a fake alien invasion, which is what they've got planned for us with Project Bluebeam, the the real enemy that humanity can come together and realize, this is why I call Flat Earth the Achilles heel of the New World Order, is this. Rather than us all unifying against their fake enemy that they're going to create for us as a reason that we all need to come together under the UN uh, to fend off this alien threat, we have a real enemy, which are these rich psychopaths that have taken control of humanity and lied to us for so long about things like aliens and evolution and the Big Bang and the globe and all of this. And we can unite with that feeling that you and I and everyone has had when you finally get to the realization that you have been lied to. The earth is flat. All of this, you know, the the, the craziest notion that uh, you've been taught is actually one of the most fundamental and obvious things ever. And that's that's the reason why. Why would they lie? To me, it's to remove your common sense and to make you look at them as authority figures. So you're like a little child again. The second you can no longer believe your own lived experience and common sense about this, the most fundamental thing in reality, thereafter, every single thing, every single intellectual thing in your life, you've now been stunted. You don't believe your own common sense or lived experience. You believe authority figures and their explanations. So that's what you're going to go to for the rest of your life for everything else. You're going to look up to these authority figures, which these secret societies place in power positions for us in the media. So you've got your heroes and your anti-heroes, you've got your opposition and your controlled opposition. So and that's why they got the eagle and the Freemason looking at yeah. both wings. It's got two heads because yeah. they don't just give you your movement, they give you the counter movement to your movement as well. So no mm. matter which side you're on, you're being controlled by figureheads who are all part of one world system, this, this great work that we're talking about, the new world order. Definitely, yeah. And, you know, when you know, even the video you put out today, when you look at the, the family and the bloodlines that are behind it, it's a, it's a very small group of people that have started this and it, that control it. And you sort of, you know, you'd wonder, you know, why would they lie? Well, I don't think it's money because these people have more money than they even know what to do with, right? So kind of put that and aside. Print it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they don't really need, it's not the money thing, it's more of a control, controlling the mind, which is what government means, govern govern and mentor and control mind. Um, and how do they do it? I think I did a bit of a, you know, write up on this in my book where, you know, look at what they, you know, controlling the mind through the government, you know, entertainment, um, you know, all these meant words, you know, all the, everything is related to this, you know, controlling your mentality through, you know, trauma, um, trauma, trauma based trauma, mind control. Isn't it? Yeah, and what wasn't it. this three years of CV locking us down, telling us that there's a threat that's going to crawl if we don't, oh. if we don't, you know, oh, don't breathe oxygen <laughs> or else you're going to die. And people are believing this. So think of the power that these people have now because they've removed our common sense and lived experience. So why would they lie? They're lying constantly. They don't just lie about this. This just happens to be one of the oldest and most egregious lies that 99.9% of humanity for the longest time just went along with. And it yeah. removes your ability to have your own foundation, to, to believe yourself you're just looking, and that's why they look at all these, uh, you know, Newton and and Galileo and stuff like they're gods, basically. Like they they weren't just regular people like you and I that came up with theories that have been promoted. No, they came up with the truth that had never been known before that, and we've only advanced because of them. That's what we've been taught. It's the exact opposite. If you opposite. look at them, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. To, it's a joke. But if you look at these guys, they're all freaks. They're all weirdos. And, you know, yep. you can look at them and go, "Whoa, wow! Look at these eyes and." You know, and you read their Galileo, biographies. Um, Cavendish, all of those guys were like freakish looking dudes with no family. I don't hear them go having a family. 
did did um, a lot of them married their know, cousins. Yeah, like just really weird families, really weird people that. I don't think anyone would leave their children with that. You know, if you look at me, go, oh, I'm not leaving my kids with you. But they trust everything about what they say about these scientific experiments that, you know, I, I tried to find a photo of um, Albert Einstein on an aeroplane. Go find one. There is not a photo of him on an aeroplane. So he never flew. So you've got more knowledge at 35,000, 40,000 feet than what he did. Same with, you know, of course, Galileo and all those guys. There was no aircraft back then. But we've got more, far more experience, everyday life experience on this ball that they presuppose was assumed or, and I don't even think they did. I, You know, if you look at a lot of these guys as well on their deathbeds, they all kind of renounce their beliefs. And, you mm -hmm. know, I'm you know, not quite sure at this stage and, you know, I, I think that's um, done across a lot of fields where these, because really, I think anyone that's got an ounce of integrity would have to say that. You know, even um, like now, people go, well, what does the earth look like? What is, if the earth's on a globe, then show me a map. I don't have a map. I could show you what people propose, you know, the Gleason map that's been around. Um, Al Baruri, I think his name was, Baruni. Um, the ancient Islamic philosopher, scholar, he first proposed the, the Gleason type map a thousand years ago. I don't know how he did that. I don't have the means to do it. I just got through a three year, three, two and a half year lockdown. You want me to, you know, I haven't been anywhere. I haven't explored this world. I, I'm not, you know. And the funny thing is that even if you look at the, if you simply Google, um, why are all maps of the earth wrong? You know, they, even they admit that the globe Earth's map, this this sphere that's sold everywhere, that we all believe what they're wrong too. You, we should have a perfect sphere if we're flying out of space and we can. We've got thousands of satellites orbiting that never have problems. They never require servicing. They never, you know, the solar panels. They could be up there for 25, 30 years. No solar panel degradation whatsoever. Even though the solar panels on your, the roof of your house, you'd have to change every 20 years because they'd lose power. You know, they're not charging enough anymore. These things are just magical, right? And we should we should have a real photo of a ball, of a ball earth. So don't ask me why I don't have a flat earth map, <laughs> right? Like the, their map, like the Mercator map that is most often used, has uh, Africa 10 times smaller than it should be and Greenland 10 times larger than it should be. And you ask yourself, why is that? Well, again, it's because the things in the south on a flat earth map are much bigger than things in the north. But if you're going to try and make it all fit on a globe, uh, the, you know, the lines of latitude have to come in on both ends rather than being splayed out in the yeah. south. And that's also, I'm sure, why the Antarctic Treaty disallows for independent travel beyond the 60th South Parallel. Because when you read ancient explorers' accounts, the further south they traveled, they found themselves more and more out of their reckoning the further south they went. And that's exactly what you would find if you were being lied to about lines of latitude converging back in on a ball. Converging back in, yeah, yeah, right. rather than just so they, they don't um, want diverging to, outward. Yeah, right. yeah. And, and everybody, you know, lives uh, above like the 50, 50th south parallel anyway. Nobody's living that far south anyway. So it's real easy to maintain this lie and to just have the uh, governments that are around that particular point of the 60th south latitude they patrol it. So and if you're they, near and, and Argentina, then you've got Argentina ships doing it. If you're near Australia, you've got Australian uh, military ships patrolling and you just can't get by. And there's, there's videos of people that have tried. You can't even get that far. Once you get out of allowed waters, you're going to be turned around. Absolutely. I find it fascinating that even as children, you know, we had, they used to have these um, pirate movies and this whole pirate thing, you know, the, with the, um, I don't want to, I was going to cover my hand, my eye with my hand, but I won't do it because someone will screenshot That's that. Right. Right there. <laughs> I won't do it. But they had their eye patch on right over their eye. Um, and it's like, Arr! and they got the skull and bones on their flag, which we know skull and bones, what, you know, the, who that is. But they patrolled the seas, right? And um you know they learned the knots to tie knots and that's why the you know you measure with knots and 
you know, they like just all this terminology ties back and I love the etymology, you know, behind, you know, I've dived into etymology for many years and I love, um, you know, Ireland, I, I see land, I land, because they were the pirates, they could see things or, you know, some people say, yeah, I see land or I land, you could do it too, you know, various ways. But you're right, they have always controlled how far you could go. They've controlled the lands from, you know, how long would you say? Two, three, four, five hundred years longer, haven't they? These this group, this turn certain group that we're talking about. Um, because I think there was a point where mate, look, I don't even actually having said that, I'm beginning to think we know freaking nothing about our history, actually. Like, what do you think about Tartaria? I know I'm, I'm jumping and like a kangaroo over to that side now, but what, what no, do you I'm, reckon I'm, about? I'm open to... call it to... Tartaria or, or whatever. You know, I don't like labelling things, but right. we call it Tartaria. That's what it's been, you know, coined as, if you like. Yeah, I'm definitely open to alternative theories of history. Anything beyond, you know, what uh, myself, any, any living person can confirm for us we're getting into realms of things that are really tough to be proven. So, you know, yeah, even, yeah, anything like beyond a, a hundred years ago, I'm definitely open to looking at it, though I haven't been fully convinced by any alternate theory, be it the oh, traditional I... Tartaria theory or the Fomenko uh, alternative chronology or any of these other ones. Uh, I'm open to all of them, and I think they are worth exploring, but at the same time, they have all the same issues that the official history has, which is that it's history. And how are we going to confirm it one way or the other? It's the, yeah, more an, right. the more ancient it gets, be it alternate or official history, it's really difficult to confirm or deny any of it. So I kind of put that in a in a box where it's like, it's cool. all possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. I like that. I like that answer because I, I, um, I'm the same and you know, I, it fascinates me. I just love, you know, looking at, you know, those buildings. How did they build them? And, you know, they're finding even in Melbourne, in, in Australia, um, that they've said that under the layer of Melbourne, there are buildings under those buildings, pubs and everything. It's like, well, what happened? You know, like, how come the Aboriginals didn't talk about that? Or whatever. Our history is just so distorted. But point being is, what can I prove? Can I go and physically prove that? Yeah, can I go and touch it? And no, that's what I like about flat Earth. That it's so it's the here and now, and anyone can go and prove it to themselves just by going outdoors and doing some basic experiments or just researching the heliocentric model. Because if that model doesn't add up, then it's not the heliocentric model, right? Mm -hmm. It breaks it, it. It it the whole thing just implodes on itself, doesn't it's, it? It's yeah? pretty much the only conspiracy that you can go out yourself with literal instrumentation instruments of calculation and measurement and then use them and determine for yourself that there is a worldwide conspiracy <laughs> like, Absolutely. You, know, you, you take out an astrolabe you take a sextant theodolite a level and, and doing these measurements you can you conclude that there's a worldwide conspiracy deluding yeah. people for hundreds of years like yeah. there's no other conspiracy no that, other. You, that you can take P900? practical measurements to to come to that conclusion whether it's jfk or the like the new world order like i said even exactly, these mate. you watch that video and you can see all these people talking about it and then writing books about it and and implementing it but even that it's it's words it's 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 a video you know it's so these true. other people saying stuff it's still not yeah. concrete like oh my god they're all lying to us so much as just simply you putting a level on a you know on a on a uh, fence post and seeing that it lines up perfectly with the horizon and you can step all the way to one side of it see the horizon all the way to that side step all the way to the other side see the horizon on that side hasn't curved at all who knows how far you're seeing you can do the math and you can see that earth is clearly not what nasa and all the scientists are saying and yeah it, it blows your mind wide open and this is why it's the achilles heel more so than any other conspiracy more so than and it's why it's, You're right. you should be pushing people should be pushing this one yeah. more so than tartaria or any of these other conspiracy theories like i said where tartaria you can you can research that for however long you want to you're never going to get to the point that you know something because it's so far removed well i mean that's not a bad one too because at least some of those structures are still there same with like giants, some of the bones are still there. Sure. At least at yeah. least some of these conspiracies, they do have physical evidence. And that those are the conspiracies that are really the ones worth 
going into, I think. The ones that are just in theory land, that's what they want you to do. To, the the tinfoil hat conspiracies that they promote all the time, the mm. ones that you can't really know one way or the other. Those are kind of those should be your fun time conspiracies for for people that that are already into this. You know, you want to delve into this or that. You fine, have a break, fine. But, yeah. <laughs> but if you're having a real conversation and you're trying to de determine what is important to let people know about, like this is the one. The flat Earth is the one. I, I think it's it's the thing that can wake everybody up because it's relevant to all of our lives. And it, like we said, you can do it any day of the week yeah. <laughs> for and yourself. You and you can be a closet flat earther as well. Like a lot of people are, you know, flat earthers, but they won't tell anyone, you know, uh, for fear of persecution from their family or their friends or their colleagues or whatever. Um, but you can do that. You can hold that. And you, that is such, not that's an enlightening feeling, but it's an enlightening feeling when you finally, as we were saying before, you know, you finally figure, figure it out that, hey, you know, what I'm sensing, it, what I'm seeing and what I'm sensing is reality. It is my, it is objective reality. Um, and as you said, that, you know, things like 9-11, you know, can you physically go and grab some soil and test it for thermite and, you know, do some care? No, you can't. You can't do that. You know, so although I do enjoy conspiracy, then I'm, well, you know, 9-11 thing, but there's a lot of other ones. And as you mentioned, um, you, you don't have the ability to physically test them, you know, with a level or with a, you know, long distance, get a P900. A Micron P900 and or the P1000, um, and some of the footage that you see is just like, well, you could do that yourself. That's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's the 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 biggest difference with flat Earth is you can scale um, water. You can go well, water in this glass is level. I put it in the sink, it's also level. I put it in that bucket level. If I put it in a swimming pool level, the lakes are level. And what about the oceans? They and just curve 360 degrees for no yeah. reason. Yeah, of course they do. And that critical thinking is, you know, incredible. I was a moderator of a, you probably know that there was a flat, a group on Facebook um, had like 125,000 people at the time, the official Flat Earth group or something. And just those daily arguments and discussions were just feisty. But the good thing is you'd see even back then people breaking through you know, and I love seeing those people that are, that are um, intellectually honest enough with themselves to say either I don't know, so yes, therefore I will sit on the fence even though I lean more on the flat earth side. Um, but but I, I see that occurring and it's, oh, we're going to go through a major uh, two, three years. I think the next two, three years is going to be huge on flat earth. Mm -hmm. I just see it growing exponentially now. I think, um, did you see there was a, or you can just go to TikTok and type flat earth into the search bar. Three and a half billion people have searched for flat earth. Mm. So it's huge. That's, you know, I'm not saying that all of them were, because a lot of it could have been to ridicule flat earth and just to check it out first time. But just to have that level of of um, attention and people seeking for, for answers and even just looking at it is, mate, I, I think it's just, there's no other way, you know, because what, what I say, you know, once you go flat, you never go back. You don't sort of go, you know, back to the ball and very few, you know, I think they're the ones that say they have are very disingenuous anyway, um, because what proof did you have to go back to the ball? What mm -hmm. happened? Mm -hmm. Did you get a real photo of the Earth? Did you, you know, the get a, the, you finally believe those 500 astronauts? Yeah. You know, so <laughs> it's just laughable. Um that there are those anti-flat earthers, though, that just consistently, no matter what you show them, you know, here's a photo of 140 kilometres away. Oh, no, they'll show you a seven-mile one and the bridge is curved. It's like, really? I'm just showing you 140 kilometres and you're showing me here at, you know, seven miles or 20 kilometres? So they're bec I think they're doing them. They just should shut up because they're probably creating more flat earthers than anyone else <laughs> out there at this stage. You know, and you know those channels that cons consistently just go out and um, they've never written a book or done anything like that, but they'll hang shit on you for writing a book. How many books have you written so far, by the way? Um, I just finished my eighth book. Yeah, cool. Is that Flat Earth related as well? or? Yeah, the Flat yeah. Earth FAQ was my last oh, one. Oh, yeah, of course. that was that, That's brilliant. I haven't ordered myself a copy, but I was fascinated by even the front cover of that book. 
And, you know, I must admit, the reason I don't buy the book, because I'm working on some books as well, and I just don't want to feel like, oh, I'm plagiarism, you know, like I've read that and then, oh, I've written that. And, you know, I'm trying not to um, have crossover or any topics. Um, but the FAQ book you did, how many pages is that? I th it's just around 200. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the the cover art was done by a guy in Massachusetts, uh, artbydino.com. Oh, I love that. I love his website. He has a it YouTube is. channel as well. Uh, look up Art by Dino and you'll find him. He looks, he gets into Tartaria and a oh, lot he, of that kind of stuff as well as making these wonderful um, pa uh, paintings. Uh, I love that. This is the style just... is very similar to what he makes a lot of paintings. And a lot of his paintings are about the flat earth or, you know, uh, painting alternative cosmologies or spiritual, um, spiritual type stuff. Um, very colorful like this is. And this and was an could, idea that I came up with and right. I commissioned for him to do, which was basically just all of these flat earth related instruments and devices that we, you know, you could use a, a, a telescope yep. and a astrolabe and a planisphere and a, a sundial, yeah, compass and a, a P900 over there and uh, a bunch of other and things like that. You got this shuttle going over, you know, to yeah, you got uh, a fake, triangle. <laughs> a fake astronaut uh, <laughs> hanging from a wire up there. Uh, you got the satellite on oh, balloons. There he is. Satellites yeah, on balloons. You got a yeah. plumb bob. I actually spent, I remember when got I first saw this cover. in the cover, firmament over here. I must have spent about 20 minutes just checking this out and going, that is just so fascinating because you got convergent perspective occurring there. You got, you know, um, as you said, all the different tools and, you know, rockets flying around over here. Yeah. And how's it going? And that's available on Lulu, is it? Or It's on Lulu and Amazon and a bunch of other distributors that I don't even know, actually. It's been also been translated into French and there's physical copies available at uh, flatearthfaq.fr as well for any French listeners. And we're getting it translated, I think it's in Spanish and you know, there's a bunch of international flat earthers that the second I drop a book, they get on it. Uh, uh, German, I think, has been done as well. Um, so, yeah, if anybody is interested in translations, also hit me up. Those are available. That, that's excellent. And I think a book like that is just so important, actually, just to um, because I've read I've seen some of the um, uh, the preview of the book and just to have it broken down like that is important, I think, for people just to sort of decipher. And you had images in there as well. You just flick through it. This this mind. particular one, I was finally able at Lulu before the internal pictures were always black and white, and I think they might have had an option for color, but it was way too expensive, and I didn't want to make right. my books yeah, that's what I found. that expensive. Yeah. But recently, they they I guess they found a way to print color uh, internal pictures that's much cheaper. So I was able to do full color photographs for this book, and for that reason, I, this is probably my favorite of the flat earth books I've written because it has all of the questions that, that people ask you. It's got yeah. all these great memes that you can find online explaining things in picture form in color. And it's, it's great. I've, I've brought it to uh, a couple of couple gatherings doing, where you know? <laughs> people had uh, flat earth questions to ask me. And of course they always ask the exact 32 questions I've got in here. So, in this, so I just, I just bring that and then they're like, yeah, but why would they lie? And I'm just like, okay, chapter three, okay, and, and yeah, just go, okay, yeah. go right into it. And then they're like, yeah, but how does the sun, like how does sunset and sunrise work? Chapter 20, and, it, and do, they do just, we... just start reading, and it's great. And the, the reactions I've got from people when they just sit and ask a question and I read it for them, you know, their mouths drop open and, you know, they, they're not expecting you to have such a comprehensive, concise, well-worded and explained answer for their question that they thought was like a gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna why say, would I, they lie? I was going to say that. Do you think it's it's their ego sort of, you know, or our ego when we do, we, you know, you, we, we want to have that nail in the coffin just to shut you down. And we think it's such an original question as well, you know, oh, why isn't anyone taking a photo of the edge of the earth? And then they snigger like they think they've, you know, just told the best joke ever. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's just stupid, man. You know, the Earth can't be flat because cats would have pushed everything off of it by now. Yeah, yeah, because they've seen a meme and they, you know, then they're going to rehearse that meme on you, you know, because right. yeah. you're the first flat earther they've ever met. <laughs> so they've got to throw it, you know, try this on someone. And it's just ridiculous, isn't it? And, you know, I, I, that's great with that book um, because you're right, it needs to be broken down and have references that you can go to just so easily with, um, 
you know, the 200 proofs. I love the 200 proofs video, but I'll send that to a friend and they'll go, yeah, yeah, great. And that's the book version of it. Just is that is that got illustrations as this well? One, this one is hardcover, hardcover, and it does have full color pictures awesome. because it's so small. I was able to kind of get away with doing both the hardcover and the full color option without it having to be too expensive. Right. So I, w I went all in with the, the 200 proofs. I did nice. with the um, the Earth Plane as well, which is my children's That's, book. That, I love that I was one. able to yeah. get that one to be hardcover and uh, full color pictures on the inside as well. I love this book. These yeah. were done That's... by Ken Ev Art, another Ken, flat earth right. um, yeah. illustrator. Brilliant did a one, wonderful job. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we worked together for a couple of years making this one, just, um, you know, tweaking tweaking the pictures, I was trying to show an experience of myself or a typical school kid and the teacher, how they are teaching you one thing. And him, he had a uh, grandfather who was a flat I earther. Love this so. story. Yeah, I've, you put this on YouTube, didn't you? Is yep. that right? Or? Yeah, I, 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 I made a, like yeah. an audio video book yeah, yeah. of it, of me reading it, trying to do Fabulous. a grandpa voice and a little kid voice. and and. Uh, reading this oh, story. Is, so th this is, is good excellent. for for children that are in grade school that are just learning because this book outlines both models. So uh, you, you, you learn from the school teacher, the heliocentric model, and you learn from the grandfather, the geocentric model. And if you're reading this to your child as a story, uh, bedtime story, you're learning both models. You're not learning necessarily, both. Not necessarily am I saying one or the other. You've got the teacher yeah. saying one, the grandfather yeah. saying the other. And the very last page, you can see they're starting to get in the grandfather's plane here. It's called the Earth Plane, which is a double entendre for the, the planar Earth, as well as the name of the grand, grandfather's plane, his airplane, which is called the Earth Plane. And they take it to Antarctica um, at the end. That's so, an excellent kids children's book. Everyone should buy this for their kids. Every flat earth should get this for their kids, right, this Christmas. I think this is a great way to introduce your kids to the subject because um, see at the end they're all going to find out if it's the truth is the earth really a plane or is it a globe and it's it's not necessarily concluding one way or the other so it it's not like a, some kind of flat earth propaganda book as much as it is a flat earth and globe earth uh, educational lay, lay it out lay it out for them yeah, in, a lay it out. in a fictional yeah, yeah. it's a fictional setting that lets them decide for themselves between the two. Of course, I know the Earth's a plane and it, it leans towards the the, <laughs> the Earth plane uh, position, but I'm, I'm not being unfair to the globe Earth position. I'm showing uh, points that um, people should ponder and think about and Definitely. decide for and themselves I, which, which way makes more sense. Yep, and I dare say any child that read that as well would be, you know, far more educated than learning you know about learning both model learn, not both models, but pro learning about the heliocentric model than they would have already at that stage of their life anyway you know probably teaching them things that they're not going to learn at school for the next three four five years or probably never with a lot of kids right um well, in that sense it's more honest than what they're doing in school where they only teach you the heliocentric model and they tell you 100 percent that this is reality and this is true and you have to sign on the test you have to give answers to all this globe nonsense that they teach you or else you, you fail, you fail. Yeah, versus yeah. this which is just telling you here's both models you decide uh, and that's source, that's that's what school that's what school should be that's what Definitely. education should be where you're open-minded like i said to history i'm still open-minded to all alternate histories because how do how do we know and who are schools curriculums and school teachers to decide for the children that this is how it is this is the official history that you need to know this is the official cosmology that you need to believe in and give us back on the test like how about school doesn't decide for us what's real and instead it just presents what's possible and then we as as students can make those kind of decisions for ourselves i hate i'd hate to be a teacher these days especially with the rise of flat earth occurring because they're going to get bombarded in in coming years because of books like that as well right mm -hmm. they're going to get bombarded with questions like hey miss how high do i have to go to see the curve oh you can see it for an airplane oh but look even neil degrasse tyson says you need to go you would have seen it at 120 000 feet like how do people you know where's this how do people reconciling this information now, right? Because after many, many years, they still go, "Oh no, I've seen it from a, um, I've seen it from an aircraft. Oh yeah, I've seen the curve." And then you go, "Hang on, look, look at this footage." And 
did you know that even Neil says that you wouldn't have said for oh who's Neil? <laughs> That's what a lot of people go. They don't you know they don't even dive down this delved into this topic enough to even know who the chief instigators are, like Neil De, you know, or the modern day guys like Neil deGrasse Tyson. But um oh no, but I've seen the curve. Like what they're saying you can't see it and now you can see it. <laughs> There's just nowhere to go. They've got no room. They've got, you know, and I wonder whether that's that why they took the Concord away, you know, because mm. that was a questionable height to go, hang on, we still can't see it at 60,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And the spin of the Earth is still not factored in to this bullet, supersonic, you know, bullet of an aircraft that's flying around. Right. You know, height, but at even, the time, it's like... Even at that height, the, the curve is elusive. I was going to ask, I can see your book there. Can you uh, show us that one? So you yeah. you came up once you figured out Flat Earth was a reality and uh, you did a bit of uh, activism in the same way and came up with this, the elusive curve. And then this is kind of like maybe the adult version of the Earth plane. I was going to where... say that as you're flicking through that. I'd say <laughs> it would be the adult version of, of that book. And um, it even starts a bit feisty as well where... You know, what do you mean the earth is flat? You know, if you lost your freaking, and it was, I had a bit feisty, I had a, you know, F word in there, but I changed it, sort of like smoothing down a bit um, because people were handing it to their children and going, oh, what? I didn't want swearing in this, you know, I didn't intend it to be for children, as you just said, it's more of a an adult version, but it covers all the topics from both angles as well. I liked what you just said before, how you would try and teach both the heliocentric and the geocentric uh, model models right and that's and the most that's, important that's thing that's what you're doing with your book there because it's a fictional uh book that most of it is dialogue between a new flat earther and his globe earth friend so you're getting both perspectives and you're getting the typical back and forth that you can expect from <laughs> friends when this happens so <laughs> as i'm reading so the elusive curve i'm feeling like oh yeah i've had this exact conversation a hundred times so it's it's got a it's a good that feeling like that as well. It feels like you know, and you it it's like a constant, isn't it? When you're meeting a new person, it's like those typical questions, you know. But why have you know? But why would they lie? And you know, um, it's really it's the, the the brainwashing is so obvious, isn't it? How is it that we all have these questions? I remember when I first got to flat Earth, I did the same. You know, I was quite embarrassed to admit this now. But oh, if the Earth's flat, what's under the Earth? I don't know why I thought that. Like, why? Is it a disc? Was it a coin? And it needs to be an underside? I just, I guess I didn't get it. Or maybe it was because of um, the way it was being portrayed through, you know, like you imagine a flat. Because we think we're flat, we're in a super, uh, an, an, uh, universe of this stars and... We think of it as an object. We think right? of the, the globe is an object. It's a large yeah. object floating in infinite space. So that's the conception of cosmology that we've been living with our whole lives. Now to come up with the flat Earth, so we think of a flat object in space. And that's why merge. people think there's an edge somewhere, because they're just taking the heliocentric cosmology that they're used to and superimposing it with a flat Earth now. But and that, So that's why you wonder, and, and I still would wonder, what is below the flat Earth? All we know is more earth as far as we can go there's deeper and Pretty deeper much. earth it's that gets foundation. harder and harder yeah yeah and maybe that's how reality is set up reality is not an infinite expanse of empty space but rather perhaps it, the, you can call it land. the basement yeah the basement yeah. of the universe is yeah. just infinite land or perhaps it there's an enclosure of some point at you know somewhat we don't know but as far as we know, we've only dug down about eight miles uh, with, with drilling technology and everything. And that's not even through the crust, the globe um, model that they present you with. The crust is like 15 miles or something deep. And then you get into the, the outer mantle and the inner mantle and then the outer core and then the inner core, which they say is molten magnetic stuff that causes the constantly moving poles to shift even yeah. though there is no such thing as magnetic magma like that doesn't work that way once it, uh, it right. reaches the curie point it loses mag magnetism right. and Actually, they've never drilled far day. enough to to determine these layers but just like with the red shifting and blue shifting random math that they do for distant stars well they do similar nonsense math for deep into the earth where they say they send little waves in like seismic 
shocks and then based on whatever yeah. yeah whatever vibrations they get back oh they know exactly the consistency how deep and how it changes and when and that's how they've g given that ball earth model with all these things in it flat earth is because i never you know even though i always thought about god and creation and the flat earth just the names that have dived down so many different topics right <clears throat> one being evolution and your documentary on, or your um, video on evolution, what was it called Evolution is a Lie? Is that what the title is? Or I, I combined it with the dinosaur video and made an hour and a half one called Evolution and Dinosaurs Debunked. Oh, uh, right. Though the original video, I called it uh, Evolution is a Masonic Lie Hiding Intelligent Design. <laughs> oh, I love that video, actually, yeah. A bit controversial, so I could see why you changed it. But even the dinosaurs <laughs> debunked, that's just as controversial because people love their dinosaurs, don't they? So you bring up dinosaurs and, you know, um, the, the possibility that they're not putting dinosaur fuel into their car, <laughs> just that notion, right? Like, what? So ridiculous, <laughs> the idea that there would be enough dinosaurs uh, just hanging around under the earth for us to extract <laughs> the, know. oil from their bones for I all know. of our, you know, all and of the uh, history. companies could just ma magically just pull that out and extract it and deliver yeah. it to certain stations and put it into, you know, just, the, it's deep, isn't it? But I think the I think the evolution one is the biggest one for people. This could be the reason why they hide, you know, the the flaw, the the notion that we um, work, you know, we are on a somewhere that's created by a creator. Yeah, intelligent design, whatever people now want to want to call it. But we've gone full swing from when I was young. Um, if you said aliens were real, you'd be laughed at. If you said God was real, it'd be normal. Now we've gone, they've inverted everything. Where now if you say God is real, you get laughed at. Say so aliens aren't real? What do you mean? But I think that's well, sort of... You, you could know, say I, God I is an alien right now, and people would be like, that makes sense to me. That, that's what God they do. is an alien. They've, they've done the entire that, world they? is a simulation. Yeah. The yeah. earth is both flat and round at the same time. God is an alien. and uh, <laughs> That's what they've done. Men can be women posts. and women can be men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they keep moving the goalposts, don't they? To And when I look at the story of their evolution is evolutionary story, it's like modeled off a biblical story anyway. In the beginning, there was there was nothing. And then there was something. Well, that's the same as the Bible sort of thing, isn't it? In right. a way, right? Yeah. They're yeah. just an a spiritual version, a because materialistic I version that has no... Uh, prime mover, you know, no conscious creator, no intelligent designer or purposeful creator, just random haphazard coincidence for no reason. Everything explodes into existence. And then at some point, life and consciousness comes into existence. And rather than being random physical collisions creating everything, now things have agency. And, and then they can start having their own free will and doing what they want. It's like, how does that possibly make any sense? Even if that did happen, the second those free will uh, conscious beings with life and agency came into being, well, that means there has to be some immaterial spiritual thing that is now part of your a uh, spiritual materialistic uh, cosmology that you're trying to create. So it just doesn't work. Even if you try to follow it to its logical conclusion, you can't get rid of the spiritual spiritual nature of reality, the, the need for consciousness as an a priori function in this reality. You can't have it be an emergent function, you know, oh, consciousness happens now, and now I'm a real person that has thoughts and feelings and agency, and then when I die, con the consciousness just was this just physical amalgamation of matter, that perfect, you know, the Goldilocks zone that happens within our yeah. human bodies to create consciousness. Yeah, that's not how it works. Consciousness is clearly the creator of the whole physical world. And we've got uh, experiments that prove that as well uh, in the quantum physics. Those can be debated because it's so small. But the philosophically, the idea of consciousness being the fundamental thing and physical matter being the secondary, we see that every night in dreams. We are the conscious creator of complete physical worlds with other beings, people, situations interacting with each other. But in reality, the whole physicality of that, you know, they can be taking telescopes in your dreams and you can be 
constructing houses and everything is solid. Doing whatever, yeah. Whatever you want, but the reality as is you, all happens like within your consciousness. You yeah, there is yeah. no physical matter gotcha. in in your dream, and it's the same thing with this reality. I would say we're just we're a character in it. And so we're exploring it with our hammers and our telescopes and binoculars, and we're like, no, this is real. See how real this is? Uh, it's it's physical matter, and you can't penetrate it or whatever. But beyond that, there's a dreamer. There's a there's clearly got to be a dreamer that created the whole thing, and that's what you call, you could call God, uh, or you can call it you know infinite consciousness or the void or um, whatever you want. But there has to be mm. some kind of that is a complex topic in itself, you know, the void and what is God, you know, where did God come from? I think they call that theosophy and diving into that is like, you could do your head in what yes. created God. Theology created God. and, and it, theosophy yeah. is another theosophy, branch yeah, of it. Theosophy is yeah. like a very complex, you know, diving into the where, okay, there's God, but where did God come from? And you right. can then, well, where did, the, where did that God come from? And you could keep, keep doing that or you could just go, I don't know. That, that's what they call the unmoved mover. So the problem in philosophy is, like you're saying, if whether it's, you call that the Big Bang or you call it God, you can always ask the question, but what was before that? And why or, or why wasn't there something before that? How could there not be something before the Big Bang? And they'll be like, oh, well, there was nothing. And then some space-time fluctuation in the vacuum <laughs> caused the everything right to happen. Temperature and the... You know, <laughs> This blue red shift to carry, and you know that blue red shift is interesting because they take real things like that blue red shift is the Doppler effect, which you can demonstrate through sound and through waves and a lot of things, but you can't demonstrate that by looking in the sky at a tele, at a star billions and billions of years light years away, and determining how far it is. No, not Especially at all. Especially when they change color all the time. Spend some time looking at stars through a telescope, yeah. and you'll see that really? they, they don't maintain the same hue of red or blue, and sometimes True. they change between the two uh, constantly. So to, to act like they all have some consistent color that you could measure to that degree of precision is ridiculous. It's constantly twinkling and changing colors. <laughs> uh, I recently came across a video, and it was um, the fastest. So I'll see if I can find the title um, here without losing you. Have I still got you here? Yeah, I yep. do. Sorry. But it was something like, you know, fastest objects on Earth. And then they go through, um, you know, a cheetah and they show you how fast a cheetah runs. And then, you know, the car and then the aeroplane and then a supersonic jet. And then, then it gets to just th these are things that you can demonstrate. You know, OK, I, I know the cheetah. Can go, th these are cool. I can see these on Earth. But then they get to outer space. And, you know, this is how fast the International Space Station is going. And then there was this thing that was saying, because we know the International Space Station was what we know. They say it's 17,000 miles an hour. Um, there's an object up there, which is a manhole cover, like a, a manhole cover for a street, right? The steel manhole cover. And they reckon if you look up Operation Plum Bob, in the 1960s, they put a manhole cover over a, a nuclear detonation they were going to do, and they blew up this, this thing, and the manhole went flying up into outer space and it's going 220,000 kilometers per hour and it was from the earth it was from a nuclear a nuclear explosion i know yeah. another thing that doesn't exist it just, they it just misses all those satellites up there this you go look at it just watch it fastest the objects on earth and you just go these guys have got no you know and you're right the whole nuclear thing is another that was mind-blowing when i dived down you know like that rabbit hole when I was no idea, you know, I had no idea. Well, I never believed in dinosaurs and all that anyway, but even when you showed and you broke down all the um, the logic behind it, it was like, fuck, why didn't I see that? And then the nuclear one was even worse. It was like, how could I not see that all these years? Really? These things are blowing up and the camera's right there and the camera doesn't get affected, but everything else does. Just crazy. And I saw someone on twitter recently they were claiming oh you know i recently started the um nuclear is fake oh that's been i was like really eric debate showed that five six seven years ago and now you've got people taking claim to things you showed yeah because you were one of the first guys to really go out with a lot of these hey not only is he saying the earth is flat but he's saying dinosaurs are fake nuclear is fake Evolutions are like, like what else did you stack on top of it? Exactly. <laughs> Just pancakes. It's like a 
pancake this big now that people have got to just, you know go through. I was going to say that before, but um, I sent just recently, you know, a mate of mine who's been he's known him a flat earther for years, and I thought he was sort of swaying on our side. But he recently, you know, he's come back charging, oh, you know, you think you know it all and you just, you know, hate people debating you and, uh, you know, you want to not, you know, you think you have all the right answers and you don't want other people's views, whatever, whatever. I sent him your video, 200 Proofs, and next day I got back to him, did you watch the video? He goes, I don't have time to watch videos. I do my head in, Eric. How do you, how do, you, how do we do this? <laughs> How are we going to do this? But we're going to do it. We're going to persevere, right? Because it's it's fun watching these these cabal are going down, man. Yeah, do you agree? For sure. Yeah, it's the fall of cabal. They're going down. There's just no, you know, unstopping what's been, you know, unraveled now into even, society. Even if they succeed, they're going to fail, is the way I see it. Is if and and if and when they do succeed is when the tipping point will, for sure, happen. If not before. So if if we can, basically, if we can make the tipping point happen earlier, we can save humanity from a lot of suffering. I agree. And that's I agree. why we want to go full force as soon as possible. Everyone that has the ability and the drive towards activism, we need your help. And we need it sooner than later. Because if, but ultimately, you can relax too. Don't get so antsy and stressed up that, that you got to, oh, I got I to gotta save the world because it's not that dire either because mm. what's going to happen inevitably is as these people continue to push their agenda it's going like the uh, analogy of the grains of sand in your your fist so they they try to crush humanity and then all these grains of sand which is the people that are no longer in their control because we see them for what they are and we see what they're doing and so they no longer have us in their grip and we fall out like that, the tighter and tighter they try to grab onto humanity. So I'm sure that all of us that are the grains yeah, of yeah. sand that are falling out right now, well, we're just collecting on the flat earth beneath them. And we're all going to pile up. And at some point, when they, they try to squeeze their hand completely and they're like, OK, complete lockdown of the entire world under the UN world, you know, UN peacekeeping troops are being sent out to all places to make sure, you, you know, by that point, you think people aren't going to wake up? Yeah, there'll be times more sand in their fist. Will there's they? nothing yeah. left. Nothing that's what left. they're doing now with all, all this nonsense that they keep, you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse as the years go by. And that's why the grains of sand keep falling out and why I'm sure that eventually similar to, and this is why I see revelations as like a playbook. Lockhart. Just as just as much as a prophecy. Because it's it's an inevitability in a, in the sense that if there are rich psychopaths that uh, it's like the pinky and the brain cartoon, you know, trying to take over. What are we going to do today, pinky? Try and take over the world. It's the oldest dream of all psychopaths in the world is to be the one world ruler, the king of the world. Every and James it, Bond movie is like that as well, isn't it? It's always this ruler, this, you know, right. I control you. And it's like that is a, an, an ancient and deep subconscious desire somewhere in the evilest depths of humanity mm. that almost needs to take place in the physical realm for us to be able to know that we we don't want that. It's like we're not sure. It's like some of us deep in us are like, well, but what if I was the world president? What if I was king of the world? Then everything would be awesome. And so maybe this whole system does work. Maybe it's my new world order or something. It's like we all need maybe collectively to make this thing happen so that we can all see it in reality and be like, oh, that really is terrible. Hopefully we don't, though, is what I'm saying, because you should be able to philosophically figure this out for yourself, that no yeah. one person, no matter how benevolent, altruistic, compassionate they could possibly be, could, could be a representative for all of humanity and make decisions on our behalf that makes sense for all of us. That's ridiculous. That's governance, ridiculous yeah. governance has to happen at a local geographical level. The people that are in that government need to be the people that live and are affected by the rules that that government makes. Yep. And the larger the geographical location that you try to make that work with, the more problems you're going to create. So in other words, the worse your governance is going to be. 
And so what would be the worst? World government, obviously. Exactly, people still yes. People still ask me, how do you know world government would be bad? How can you be sure? And this is why I say it's like we've got something in our subconscious that humanity hasn't figured out yet that the biggest government possible is the worst government possible and the smallest government possible is always the best government possible. Yeah, it's, it's it like we don't trust Philosophically, it makes sense. Um, yeah, it's like we don't trust ourselves and we need, well, not, you know, but people need a saviour, as you said, to control them, to, you know, that you're looked after. But, you know, I, I agree with what you're saying, this world, this world government is the op, the the antithesis to what we should be doing. We should be looking for a diverse governments, you know, like it was many years ago. Every country was different. Yeah. Now you travel to cities and they all look the same. Like, have I really left my city? All right. these buildings look the same as that built, as the one I was there, the transport, everything's the same. There's no, there's no very, no diversity. Yeah. Right? I think there's Asia the one world a... coming into fruition. It's, Isn't the, it? Countries yeah. don't even feel different anymore and they barely are because of this international order that's being created. And you're right, 100 years ago, it wasn't like that. Countries like that. were very different. They were based yeah. on whatever the people in that country, how they operated and how they wanted it to be. They all didn't have to bend to the dictates of NATO and the UN and all of these other world and bodies plush, trying to well, get them. Right, right, WEF. Mm. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And how did they do it? You know, I, I'm I'm fairly convinced that they honeypotted a lot of these people of you, you know, dived into that where they, they've got it over them. They've got mm -hmm. something over these world, you know, these political leaders, you know, I wouldn't say world leaders, but they've got it over like something over Dan Andrews. I don't know, did you see what Melbourne went through during lockdown? You know, just crazy. Well, I, I, mean, I know how Australia had some crazy. of the worst lockdown uh, rules in place. Yeah, people are still suffering. I think till this day, you know, the 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 the, psych, the mental repercussions are just going to be there for many years because you don't lock down, you know, kids and not expect, you know, for two or three years or two and a half years and not expect them to be, you know, psychologically damaged by, you know, this scary notion that your grandma's going to die, your mum, your dad, everyone's going to die, right? Locked down, wear a mask, all of this shit. And you know that you know. I, I don't know. And these governments, even even as someone all... as aware as I was, I still felt the effects of the trauma from from Me being too, man. being put over that for Me three too. years. Yeah. Society making everyone muzzle up and and making my grandmother not want to hug my parents for three years. Have, have to wear masks inside the house because she believes the news stations more than her daughter and stuff like that. So yeah. it's really traumatic. For, it's breaking families apart and stuff. Uh, and, you know, you know rebreathing your own carbon dioxide for years at a time, that creates holistic problems because, you know, you uh, oxygen, we ox oxygen goes into the lungs, the lungs oxygenate the bloodstream, and the oxygen in your bloodstream is essentially the food for all the cells in your body. Ox that's why oxygen is so important. If you don't have Absolutely. it for a few minutes, for a few minutes, you die. So it, yeah. it's it's that important. Yet they yeah. think that Hypoxia, covering isn't it? for yeah. hours a day for years that this is a healthy thing to do because there's little little viral particles in, in the atmosphere from somebody ate bat soup in China four years ago or something, and now the particles from the bat soup are flying all over the world to the point that you know seven billion people need to mask up for three years. The most ridiculous, ridiculous rhetoric thing, yeah. ever. And but as you said, people are still, as you said, still affected, people masked here. Still I, see, see I see them too. I see them too, Eric. Yeah, there's still masks at the supermarket. And it's like, do you feel special? Like, what is it with you, you know? What's going on here? That you're wearing a mask, that you are going to be saved and everyone else is going to be die. You're going to die. You're going to be the last person on earth. You know, like um, I Am Legend, you know, one of those movies where the dystopian movies. Um, but... I like the point that you said that, you know, I've been a truth of, you know, a truther for many years and, you know, just been questioning a lot of things, but this got to me, the lockdown, it really friggin' got to, you know, um, it messed with my head just, you know, and it was funny, not funny, I just launched my book three months before lockdown started, it was it September 2019. So then, you know, I was into the marketing, I was, you know, doing this, and I was going to go on a book launch and, you know, had all these plans and then it just shit itself, you know. But those first initial couple of weeks, I thought, oh, fuck, you know, this could be bad. Like, we've never had this before. I don't know. You don't know what was wrong with me. To I didn't believe in the narrative, but like, hey, you never know. You know we've never seen this in our lifetime. But um, 
then, you know, it didn't take long to connect the dots on that one, did it? It was just obvious. When when all these worldwide governments are colluding and saying the same things together, be very, very wary of, of the situation because they never do that unless mm. it's, you know, controlled and planned and, um, you know, but, yeah, the the I think they've been, you know, how have they done that? We will never know. How can we prove if they've been honeypot, if they've been, you know, yeah, tough one though. But we should never ever forget that. And the problem, and I, I like what you said before because we can put a stop to that because this is not an end to them. They're not going to try that once and go, oh no, look, we tried, and they're just going to progress till twenty thirty mm. and beyond unless we put a stop to them. Right. How can we put a stop to them? What is the one truth that the whole world can collectively go? Hang on, they lied about that, and we don't need everyone. It's going to, you know, it's, what is the tipping point? 70%, 75%, 80%? What's it going to take? I think we'll get there eventually. And that's when these guys will just have to, I don't know what they're going to do. Where are they going to mm. go? Where are you going to hide now, mate? Mm-hmm. Right? Because now all your, your, your space agencies are going to be dismantled and all these bullshit, um, you know, um, courses or, whatever, or, or um, degrees that you're selling in universities are gone. Mm-hmm. All these you know, fake science, isn't it? At the end of the day, right? Pseudo pseudoscience, and that's got to be eliminated. And I think if we can do that, it's a pipe dream, isn't it? Is it a pipe dream that we can break, beat them? Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Not for. I don't not, think so either. No, 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 no. we wouldn't be just, doing it if it wasn't. Exactly. No, I think a lot of people just have their own timeline in mind, and their timeline is a lot shorter than the necessary time it actually takes for these kind of movements to you know look at right. history you know the renaissance the enlightenment uh, all these, they're not 10 years that's all we've had so far with this particular subject i'm not expecting the entire world to change in 10 years but i would say that we've done a darn good job in 10 I, years i'm very yeah. surprised yeah and we get another 10 years like this going and like you said the the great thing about this is you don't go back the supposed flat earthers that Changed back to the globe. There's only about three that I can name. I, I don't believe any of them. They, they, yeah. I see all three of them as agents who pretended to be flat earthers. Yeah. Uh, well, they probably know the earth is flat, just like most Freemasons uh, know. But then they play the part of the globalist, and they that's their propaganda. And then so now at this stage, they need a new level of propaganda, which is I was in the Eric Dubay cult for five months or something, and now for the past five years, all I do is make globe earth videos about how earth is a globe and and uh flat earth is a cult and i was in it you know that's what these these mm. guys do but they're and, not genuine they probably, yeah they, they weren't genuine from money the out of that and they oh, make money they out of that and people have realized what you know that's um they're milking it and even you know those i don't even want to mention their names on your right. show actually eric um I just don't want to give him any credit but yeah. there are a lot of anti-flat earthers who are you know, making more money out of, you know, a guy like you who's written eight books and put in hard, you know, hard work and um, maintaining, you know, um, I could just imagine the work required to to try and promote eight books as well. Trying to promote one book is hard enough, let alone eight, <laughs> right? But um, so, I've been shut down and banned from yeah. every platform imaginable multiple times as well, trying to get this out. And they've got the algorithm working against me where you can't find any of my video. You can type in the exact title of any of my videos and you will not get that video. You will get some video debunking that video or some other thing tangential to it debunking Eric Dubé rather than that actual video. So you, you can't even... I was looking for specifically. Yeah. 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 Imagine if Google, um, if your um, you know, GPS... Uh, in your car work like that oh you know i want this address but it takes you somewhere else like what i wanted this address you know because that's effectively what they're doing especially when the person is typing the title of your video specifically in mm-hmm. there because at one stage you could type 200 proofs and that's all you had to do yeah, yeah? you didn't well, even come have right to write up. first the first thing exactly and there would be multiple copies it. of it so you'd yeah, see yeah. other people's versions of 200 proofs. Now type that in, see what you see. You'll see Neil deGrasse Tyson, Mark Sargent, and all these other people that have nothing to do with 200 proofs or the legitimate flat earth movement. And they're all just puppets that have been propped up for, for people who are searching for this subject the first time. So you, YouTube get... is clearly in bed with this, and they admit it. We put it in the Level documentary where they had the congressional hearing with the YouTube, yeah. and they said specifically they talked about Flat Earth. They said, so for instance, if uh, somebody says Flat Earth, what what have you uh, done to 
curtail it. And they're saying that they've got their little wiki boxes that they put up saying that it's not real and that they have uh, the way that they've changed their algorithm since that time is that now, rather than whatever keywords you put in being the main driver of what shows up top in the algorithm, no, it's not what keywords you put in. It doesn't matter what you put in. What shows up the top of the algorithm is their, what they'd consider through their algorithm the most official source. So you get your blue check mark, you get whatever whatever they consider official. So of course NASA's official, and of course anti-NASA people are unofficial. So you mm. type in any anything, moon landing, NASA this, NASA that, you're going to get the official version and all these anti-flat earthers and everything before you get the thing that you typed. Because that's yeah. not what Google does anymore. Google doesn't give you the most relevant search for what you typed. It gives you what they say well, they is the want. most authoritative uh, yeah. official site that is somewhat related to what you typed. That's and how yeah, Google works now. They yeah, changed how search engines it. work. Yeah. I, I think then when they started, they had like, do no evil, do no harm or something like that. I don't yeah. even know if I believe the official yeah, Google be story evil. anyway. Right. So, yeah, um, but now they've just gone beyond, you know, they were a good search engine and they're going to... And you used to get what thousands happened? of results. Have you tried that one? You can only go to like 10 pages in now. So you type in flat earth, three, you know, whatever, you get hundreds of millions of results. And then you click two, page three, page four. By the time you get to about page 10, it'll stop. You can't even find anything anymore. Right. So they're, they're only giving you the 100 most official sources for whatever search you do. And then the other 100 million hits that they get, you can't even access it. And what that would good be the is opposite that? of what would be happening over the years. You know, how could there be more searches back then when there were less people searching for it? Now they've got more content. They should be at friggin' 100, 200 pages of indexing. And you're right, the whole thing. And, you know, the other some of the other search engines are allowing it, which is pretty cool. So you can just go elsewhere. And, you know, I think we should eventually all move Google, from Google. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Onto That's the what's going to happen to these guys. Search platforms yeah. that are still yeah. giving us keyword relevant searches rather than this authoritative algorithm that Google's trying to implement. Yeah. And I said, I'm a webmaster. I build websites in um, 20 years now. And I have a love hate relationship with Google because I work with clients. I, I do search engine optimization, um, getting people ranked on Google. But then I know how manipulative their whole algorithm is and it's just you know it's very hard working you know it, I, I think it's hard um just working full stop after you <laughs> you realize how much this whole system is just it's just bs isn't it like working for for what you know they say that too like what you know why is flat earth even important i still have to go to work in the morning i get that one all the time uh, all so. the time so yeah. people won't even look into conspiracy subjects because they're so tired from their day job, they don't even want to think anymore. Their, their, their thinking energy has been expired from their slave job, and the fact that you have extra energy to think about these subjects that you know they think are crazy just makes you like this enigma to them. They're just like, how do you, don't you have to work in the morning? Why do you care? And, but, but again, I would say this is part of the trauma-based mind control that has got people thinking this way, that they're in, they're slow into their slave mentality, that when someone questions it, they're just like, get back to work, man. They're going to, you're going to get whipped, you know, <laughs> they're going to see that you're not going to work in the morning or whatever. Definitely. And, and, and you feel I, that way. Once you find out how much you're being screwed, yeah, you don't want to go to work in the morning. And maybe that's another subconscious thing. And that's why they say this thing so often, because they subconsciously know that Hey, if all this is true that you're saying, and we're under this level of deception and manipulation, why am I at a slave job? Why am I working my freaking life yeah, away? What am I doing, am I doing with my life? And it's like, yeah, th those are the exact questions I'm hoping you'll start asking yourself if I can break through your globe earth mentality. It's such a pervasive mentality. That's what I'm saying. It removes your common sense, removes your ability to listen to your friend when he brings up demonstrable empirical evidence in favor of your little authority figure 500 years ago that you've never met, but you have, you know, this assurity that they are the most intelligent people in all of history. And your friend is now crazy, even though he's your best friend and you've always gotten along and agreed about everything for your entire life. And now suddenly, no, but Einstein, but what about Einstein? <laughs> Who? Yeah. Who? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's hard, you know, and I think, um, 
it'll break apart. The system's got. But what what do we mean by that? You know, I don't think it's going to be like you know a, a world with devastation. There's no food. It's like because we're all flat earthers. Like the whole world went to disarray. Because I reckon once you get to this level, like I, I was recently thinking, I bought some seeds, and I thought um, various seeds, pumpkin seeds, lettuce seeds, carrots, whatever. So I, on my street, if I went and said to every house, said, hey, do you have a garden? Oh, yeah, I do. You put the carrots. I'll go to the next house. Can you do this? And just in one street on your house, if everyone grew fruit and veggies and just um, exchanged with, with each other, well, you don't really need – there's your food, right? There's your winter crop, your summer crop, your, you know, like spring crop. Or, yeah, you could do that. But we we think we, we're relying on this. I like one of the videos you said, uh, uh, and I don't know which one it was, but you mentioned a materialistic world that we live in, isn't it? It's all materialistic. I think people are afraid of, you know, they've got the house and they've got the cars and they've got their kids are going to that school and they're afraid of this system imploding within itself and they don't have that anymore because, the you know, all of a sudden we've, we've disclosed this... Um, this beast, this world, what uh, new world order, or whoever, whatever you want to call them, but I think that's the opposite. Shouldn't it be the opposite of what would occur? Mm -hmm. Like, because we're taking, where you know, you're not wasting billions of dollars in space and all these stupid industries that you know, military. Take a look at the military industrial complex. Um, to start with, um, I think that's the most destructive industry on earth. They say, don't they? Even from um, from you know, consumption of energy, um, oils, etc., to move the military vehicles all over the world, the, the troops and all the rest of it. It's the most the, expensive industry, uh, is the arms industry, followed by the oil and followed by the pharmaceutical. Yeah. All, of, all three of which are, you know. And I think now child trafficking is sort of slotting itself, you know, the human trafficking is slotting itself within oh. there as well. Yeah. That's how pervasive it's become. That's become a massive industry and you know who's consuming that? These same people. Mm. So it's very, it's just like, I don't know. Um, we've got a battle ahead of us, but I think it's a doable battle because the flat earth is that one thing that can connect everyone together. Like we wouldn't be talking to each right. other if it wasn't for flat earth, right? Even if there was a video on evolution, it's like, oh, yeah, cool, evolution. But, you know, flat earth is like you sort of form a family over the years. Yeah, that's you? interesting. Yeah. Why is that? Because, yeah, that's, I, don't I, I don't feel that with the evolution deniers or, or the, the di dinosaur you know dinosaurs didn't exist people or whatever now i feel a much more kinship or some some kind of familial yeah it's, it's like a family it's like oh you get it oh you're back to acknowledging your common sense as being reality you no longer follow the dictates of psychopaths on high cool come on over I yeah, know, it, it yeah, really yeah. feels like that but yeah there's a, something about the flat earth is is more special in that so there's a there's a real feeling of um of um connection with the other people that that get to this realization than pretty much any other realization yeah i couldn't agree more and especially when you meet your first flat earther i remember the first time i met just a rand you know like it was online a friend of mine that we've been chatting for a while and it was one day he's like oh let's meet up we met up at a, a local pub which was called the globe it was <laughs> the sporting globe which was really funny we laughed when we got there and um but just that feeling, and he had a flat earth t-shirt on and people mm. were looking at it or, or like NASA lies, that's what he had. So that's a cool, you know, way to sort of say you're a flat earther, but not, you just go NASA lies. People, people love NASA, so that's always going to be a, what do you mean NASA lies? And, but yeah, just that feeling of meeting a flat earther and just having this um, camaraderie, camaraderie, as you said, with other flat earthers around the earth who could be, you know, um, you know, an age, be no barrier, you know, appearance or language often as well, right? Because he got people just, um, I think someone, I think there was some research in Brazil and they said 30% of people believe the earth is flat in Brazil. Yeah, Massive. it's taken off over there in Brazil. Massive. Yeah. I wonder what's happened over there. They have a, a major distrust in their government, I think, would right. be a big part of it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but that's awesome how the, the flat earth does that. And brings us together in, in that sense. And you know what I think is part of it is I think the flatter, like we're talking about these globe earthers and how they come at you with the character attacks and the ego. I feel like it builds up this ego around people. And flat earthers 
break through that. They 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 get through that whole defense mechanism, that ego that they've built up around this information. About, oh, I know this to be true. Well, no, you don't. And you you the process of becoming a flat earther by learning all the information. That's I think a really important process. And when people do it, that's when they 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 change internally into people who they don't have so much of an ego. They're much better listeners. They're much more able to accept things. They have a, clearly they have an open mind. But then they yeah. also have to have a level of intuition and discernment to be able to get that far down the rabbit hole. And the flat Earth is literally like the found the bottom of the rabbit hole. Once you've reached the flat Earth, you're there. So when people are at that level, even if you have you know, oh, I haven't researched the nuke thing or whatever, they're open to it. They're not going to come they're gonna at you. With, to they're not going to yeah. be like, well, there's no way nuclear bombs don't exist, man. It's like they just went through the globe thing. You, they're they're you not going to the biggest one. Yeah, the biggest yeah. one already. So they're not going to have that same ego for everything else. So it blows your mind open, but it doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't take away your intuition or discernment. Because that line, people are like, well, don't open your mind too much. And that is true. There's uh, people are so open-minded, and it's like they have no discernment. And so any yeah. idea they hear is like, oh, so so that's true now, and yeah. that's annoying. That's annoying to me as well. But um, but that's why I always I, I look at these. You have to have both of these things. You have to have a mind that's open enough to be able to take in any new information without any bias. Then you have to have enough discernment to be able to look at all that new information and weigh it against the, the pro, you know against reality basically yeah. and see how, how it goes and then you don't have to instantly make a decision that's another thing the flat earthers are able to do okay well we had to hold that in our mind for you know days weeks months maybe years even both models and not decide most people hate that that's why they whatever the, the, the closest religion is oh i'm i'm an american so i'm a christian oh yeah. i live in iran so i'm a muslim oh i live in thailand so i'm a buddhist they don't even think about it they just t take the closest holy book to them and they're like i believe this now and it's the same thing that they that people do with um, mainstream information cosmology and everything but if you do this it's like you got uh an opportunity to be a detective for years maybe or for months you you got the experience of what it's like to have to piece together disparate pieces of evidence and try and find out who done it and try and figure out you know what, you know all these the ins and outs of it that is true education that's what that we should be doing in school and, and wasn't you know they should present us well, imagine if they presented you the globe and the flat earth in school and they gave you the whole course for a year to to argue you know figure it out read, read both and the you Could wouldn't you even have to come up with an answer. Discussions. Exactly. Discussions there would probably be and... split. Probably oh. still wouldn't come up with a, a conclusion. Yeah. Some people would be fervently flat earth. Some would be fervently globe earth. Some would flip throughout the course of the semester because they would right. realize the veracity yeah. of the I flat wrong, earth arguments. About that. Yeah. But, and this is why I liked philosophy in college. And it was the only uh, class that I felt was worth me taking because this is the structure that all classes were. You would read a book. Then you'd read a philosopher that said basically the opposite. Then you go into class and you argue with each other. You debate back and forth about amongst those ideas as well as your ideas that you thought of while you were reading them. And the whole that whole process is education. That whole thing is, you know, that creating is true education. Creating, exactly, it? not yeah. the robotic version of okay, read this. Okay, what did uh, he I say? A B C yeah. A. Oh, hundred percent. You're the smartest kid in the class now. Yeah. From that. Well, yeah, the, it's a process. Education isn't a rote memorization and regurgitation thing. That's what robots do. That's not education. Mm. Education is this exploration, this detective work, this investigation I'm talking about. Yeah. And when you do that as an adult outside of school with a subject like the flat earth, you it's like a new education. You, be, you basically uh, are going back to school for this new subject. And, and yeah. like you said, uh, that was just seven years after I figured out Santa Claus wasn't real. Yeah, most people, their education ends at 18 years old, and then yeah. they live live for another 80 years or something. And they like never if, question. If you're not actively, the especially in the internet age, if you're not actively the arbiter of your own adult education for the rest of your life, you're, you're falling behind. You think that the 12 years of the public school curriculum is enough mm. education for a lifetime? Most of it's lies anyway. And they yeah. didn't even teach you how to think. They just taught you what to think, and it was and wrong. You, 
And you couldn't question it as well, could you? You couldn't question it whatsoever. If you did, you failed, as you said before. Right. Don't, I don't believe in that. I, you know, I say well, other. No, I don't. You know, they don't even give you the other option. You know, yeah. do you believe this, that, that, or other? No, I don't believe any of those. You have yeah. to like default to this loop that you sit there going, well, what am I going to choose here if I don't choose? You know, the stupidest question because they'd always put that stupid one there, wouldn't they? You know. Right. Um, but it's a imagine the education system. Yeah, you're right. Which is a process of um, zetetic inquiry rather mm. than you've just been told read this book. This is the truth. Now, did mm. you actually? You know, did we actually ever go? Because they took us to the zoo for excursion, and we go to where? You know, where else do we go? Wherever I've forgotten now. But did you? Do you think they'd take us to the beach to measure the curve of the Earth? The elusive curve, it should be so simple. Like every student would be like, where are we going today? Oh, we're going to go do an experiment to measure the curve of the Earth, the sphericity. No one does it, never. Mm. This should be one of the first things. Let's do the Eretosthenes experiment. Hmm. You know, just stuff like that. But right. the, it, it, they've dumbed down society and even the education system to the point where people are so lazy. They don't want to, you know, um, let's not question those 500 year old guys with big beards and you know the weird looking eyes and yeah really weird like some of some of these people um i don't even know if they're real do you think they're all real or these characters no, they've developed no, I, I think some of them are fake for sure yeah i, I think some so, of them are fake as even well. like like copernicus the one who came out with the whole model his book wasn't published until he died so how yeah. do we, you know, or, and of course, 500 years ago. So how do we even know he was a real person? But and if he was, of, his book wasn't published until he died. So how do we know it was his book? <laughs> so how do we know it? That's very yeah. true. Yeah. So someone publishes my book after. How do you know they didn't manipulate it? It yeah. should be published. Yeah. And Copernicus, strangely enough, the anagram of Copernicus is open circus. Well, mm. I don't know what, you know, like, and it is a freaking open circus right <laughs> now. Once you start saying that the world spins and, you know, doing all these crazy um, motions in, that aren't that have never been proven. That was one of the, you know, if they had, pro you'd wonder how people felt for it back then. Or do you think that's another story as well that most people really didn't believe in the in the ball, this sphere that has been, you know, we're told that oh, all the Greeks knew it for two and a half thousand years, and everyone believed it's a ball all this time, which is a. You must you must admit, but a big rebuttal that the globe Earth has come back with, don't they? We've mm -hmm. known about it for two and a half thousand years. Oh, you're mm -hmm. stupid! But I don't believe that was the case. I true. Yeah. The, the more I research, the more I go, and there's a lot of studies that show, um, even news reports from the early 1900s, where flat Earth was a hot topic, even even way back then. But we were right. told it was settled. Mm -hmm. um, it absolutely yeah. wasn't. And like you said, 2,500 so years ago, just a few ancient Greek philosophers presented a couple supposed proofs that they had for potentially why Earth might be a globe. Even them, they didn't like say for sure. They came up with uh, thought experiments that they thought um, showed that it was a globe. Um, but then that didn't catch on at all. That was not a yeah a school of thought that caught on at all for two thousand years until you get Copernicus Copernicus coming along with his book, and then people weren't buying that, which is why you had to have Galileo come along, um, uh, Newton come along, Galileo as well, but Newton come yeah. along with uh, gravity to explain how things wouldn't fall off of their spinning sphere pair, and uh, and even then, of course, as you know, the story goes, it wasn't well received, and so. From what I can piece together, the next 300 years is how long it took to brainwash humanity into uh, believing this until you get to the mid 1800s when Robotham and Carpenter came along. And then you get newspaper articles and other things that give you a view of what it was like back then. And it was pretty similar to now. So by mid 1860s, the world thinks it's a globe pretty much and when yeah. a flat earther comes out doing a lecture circuit and presenting his findings from what he was doing on the bedford level experiments it made a wave th across uh, the uk and uh, all the way over to america and and the people like uh, carpenter and others here picked up the 
the flag uh, in America and did the same thing. Oh, so Carpenter was from America, was he? I, right. I believe I believe Carpenter yep. was, and uh, right. uh, there's some others. I can't think of all their names off the top of my head, but there was a, the biggest group was there in, in England under uh, Lady Blunt. She created the Universal yes. Zetetic Society, which turned into the International Flat Earth Research Society, which right. I, I restarted. And um, so when you look at the newspaper articles, they were fighting against the main, you know, they were seen as the crazy flat earthers. Everybody knows it's a globe. It was the same kind of rhetoric you hear now. But they made waves for the next several decades to the point that, like you were saying, at the turn of the century, this was a hot topic of debate. And it wasn't until Einstein that it really started the downturn. To, so when Einstein came out with the whole off, yeah. relativity, well, before that, they, they'd had the Michelson-Morley experiments. Exactly. So they're proven ether, flat earth, you know, flat earth, no, and no, ether, no, all this stuff is, is coming out. Yeah. But then what do you get? You get Einstein. And he, they promote him as the smartest person in history. Again, like we said, they, they, they're yeah. purveyors of the bullshit. They have to yeah. tell you that this is the smartest guy ever. And so, okay, and so what's his smart thing that he thought of? Relativity. What's that? Well, what this is, is we can't know whether we're moving or not. We can't tell. So either, you know, we're spinning around the sun or the sun's spinning around us. But in reality, everything's spinning around everything. And we're in an infinite space where everything just spins around everything and nothing is stationary. Therefore, we can't know. <laughs> Where the Earth is stationary and the Sun moves, the Sun's stationary and Earth moves, where everything's moving, everything's relative. And so with that one philosophical swoop, all the demonstrable empirical evidence that we have showing that Earth is motionless just goes out the window because Einstein said, no, it could, it, could, it seems motionless, sure, but we could be doing the and, and but even though there were some very large proponents to Einstein at the time as well, there was, there was a book, A um, Hundred Scientists Against Einstein, they all thought his theories were um, fanatical and fan, just fantasy. You mm -hmm. can't prove it. Prove right. it. You do. It's okay. just a so, mind game. Because he, he basically didn't do he's saying... He didn't you can do be, any science. He yeah, just came up like with that, a little philosophy. It, it's like when you're at a, you know, you could be at a train station and you're sitting on the train and, you know, you're not paying attention the train, you see another train start moving and you think you're moving for a second. But it doesn't take you long before you realize, I'm not moving, it's that train. But they tried to use that philosophy of this crazy type of thinking to go to just, it's 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 mine, it's just trickery, isn't it? And, you know, most people back then were really not, you know, uh, could you question it? Really, you're gonna question that? Who, who would? But, but my point, people actually did, but they didn't get traction. And, you know, we didn't even learn. I didn't even know who Nikola Tesla was at school. So, you know, we, there's a lot of, uh, did I know who Mickelson Morley was? Never heard of that. Mickelson Gale experiment, never heard of that. Sagdak experiment, never heard of that. Um, Ares failure, never heard of that. But we all heard of Einstein. And then, you know, if someone's smart, oh, good one, Einstein. You know, they even threw in things like so making business the smartest guy ever. If you say something smart, you're Einstein, you know. It, it, it's it's some grand manipulation, but um, there was actually an article that I came across, I think I wrote about it in my book, where there were teachers um, who were trying to teach the heliocentric model, even, even in the early 1900s at school, and the parents were coming in and telling them they're going to get sued for teaching them a, a fake model. So mm -hmm. that tells me that a lot back then, there were a lot of flat earthers. Oh yeah, there was a whole town, uh, Zion, Illinois. Zion, yeah, yeah. It was like 6,000 people in the town. The the main guy uh, <laughs> of the town there, he had a radio show that made it all the way to Australia, actually. Right, really? <laughs> and yeah, and, uh, and uh, the um, uh, Charles Johnson's wife was an Australian as well. Um, the the old president of the International Flat Earth Research oh, Society. Really? Wow. Yeah, and, and she, she it stuck in her craw that they they would call it the land down under, and so they would always put out in the flat Earth news that Australians are not down under a spinning ball. We are all on a level plane. Uh, 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 that that was is funny. just. I, I must admit the whole down under thing that is funny actually, <laughs> especially. And what's interesting is a town with six thousand flat Earthers. I would live there. That'd be awesome. It'd yeah. be, you know, fun times. Um, 
But when I finally realised, it's just stupid, man. I can't believe I'm, you know, I believed I lived on a ball all these years. <laughs> so when the, when the penny dropped, it's like, I was embarrassed. It was embarrassing. I'm not only spinning around, going, well, it's like a friggin' one of those rides at the at the at the carnival. Yeah. It's just insane to think Australians are living up upside down. And I think that's a huge, um, you know, just it's, I think it makes it a little bit easier for Australians when they get into flat earth. Go, hang on, am I really upside down? I postulated that to my dad because he's um, from Greece and. When he that's another from... thing. That's another thing. Relativity does so is that it makes it so because they don't. If you say that they're upside down in Australia, what your average glober will say? No, they're not. Nobody's no upside up down. down. There is yeah. no up and down. So again, another <laughs> philosophical mind game where they've made it so that you you no longer believe up exists and down exists, and you're like, no, no, because space it's infinite in all directions. Therefore, up and down is relative. There's Einstein's word again. This is what it was. Relativity killed dem demonstrable empirical facts because now suddenly, no, it's relative. It, you can just philosophically swipe it off the table like it's not important that you can prove things. It's like, no, no, you can't prove it because I said so. <laughs> relative. All right, sorry, you're, you're giving your uh, no, example. Cool. No, you're right, though. All because of a formula. That's all it is. It's not no, even it's a formula. It's a formula. It's not even <laughs> It's a thought experiment. It's a thought experiment, right? Yeah, which he probably put in some mathematical equation, but in in um, even gravity, <clears throat> the formula for gravity requires an r value. And the mm. r value relates to radius. So who proved the radius? Right. They just slot that radius in there because Eratosthenes did it, proved it apparently, because he's the only guy to actually do it. Isn't that funny that they can't, you know, that they pick on us for every little aspect that we don't know, but they keep changing their model like that. It's like, really? You know, they just gonna, made the, uh, the moon is now within the Earth's atmosphere within the just a Earth's few years Earth's ago. Atmosphere. Oh, we just decided uh, when we went to the moon and we, we left the atmosphere and we're in the vacuum. Of no, we weren't. Uh, we just decided that we weren't a few years ago. So, uh, we were within Earth's atmosphere, I guess. Oh, OK. Thanks, NASA. Thanks for lying to us for 50 years. No, it yeah. wasn't, we just didn't realize it, I guess. Uh, we didn't realize it until the Flat Earthers came out and started saying all this, this stuff no about problem. the the, the <laughs> magically velcroed atmosphere that has to that I was it. talking about, where they don't have, well, where does it end, NASA? How fast is the Earth's atmosphere and everything in it spinning perfectly along with it? They won't give you an answer, but they're extend they've extended it past the moon since a few years ago. Why'd they do that, Flat Earthers? You know? They're just, yeah. the, it's damage control explanations Isn't in it? reverse. They're, they're just coming up with stuff in reverse because they know it's flat. They, in the NASA documents, flat, non-rotating Earth. Assume yeah. all things as, as if it was a flat, non-rotating Earth. Page one. And then for the next 200 pages, but it's a globe and we revolve around the sun and everything. But don't try to make that math work out because it doesn't. <laughs> and they even use the salt flats, which are the flattest places on Earth. They use them to calibrate their gyroscopes because when you calibrate, you need to know, well, where can we go to the flattest place? Hey, water, water's flat. And they use that as a, a method to calibrate um, a gyroscope, not around a sphere, not to account for any, because you wouldn't be doing it over a, a flat surface unless you're training people to fly over a flat surface. Absolutely critical, these devices, because you don't want people crashing into mountains and you know all that sort of you know pretty important stuff, right? Um, but the changing of the model is really important, and they've even changed the distance of the stars off from this many light years now. So each change of a light year, we're talking like billions and billions of kilometers, and you just want to change a few light years? No, thank you. Have you seen some of the um, the ridiculous stuff they've been pushed up? Oh, an asteroid the size of 35 chickens to pass by Earth. Have you seen that? Just type, just try asteroid the size of into Google and then go into news and like one week it's asteroids the size of 27 penguins next week, 35 chickens, 20, 20, 22 giraffes. Like it's just getting ridiculous. That, and people believe this shit, right? They believe it. Um, oh, we just found a, an asteroid and it's got, you know, Four hundred trillion dollars worth of diamonds and gold, mm. and then I read the comments. And people are like, "Oh yeah, wow! We could change the whole world, Earth's, Earth's economy with that." What? what are you people? What? Yeah, they're just going to get this and split it between everyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just insane what 
I think they're pushing it. They're just like, how far can we go before the people actually, you know, I think you, your parents might do that, or well, not your, but parents might do that with kids when, you know, oh, look, I'm going to have to tell him we're getting, you know, just the most ridiculous present this year. So he doesn't get it just so he just but finally realises that Santa <laughs> isn't real, you know. Right. Dad, where's my drum set, you know. <laughs> Where's my BMX bike? And I don't get anything, you know. And you don't believe in Santa anymore, just like that, right? You know, he's an asshole, whatever. Um, I was thinking, just so, as you said that, um, the parallel again to the Santa Claus versus the globe thing. When I was a kid, I remember, uh, you know, my parents did the whole Santa Easter Bunny and Tooth Fairy thing with me. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I believed in all of them for years Wait, yeah uh, until and and this is how it works with the flat earth thing too it's until you think of something that doesn't fit right that's always the first thing that has to slip in there and that's why you got to take notice of that rather than just be like why are you even questioning that why would you be skeptical of something of settled yeah. science well because mm -hmm. this is how it works when when i what happened with me was i was laying there with the tooth under my pillow one night thinking <laughs> and i thought you know every time anyone gets anywhere near this house let alone a window or a door my dog barks <laughs> why That's hasn't good. the dog ever barked at the tooth fairy the easter bunny or santa claus and i got out of bed and i went down to my parents they're watching tv in the living room and i said why doesn't precious bark at the tooth fairy when they come in the window to put money <laughs> under my i didn't even think of the fact that i didn't wake up when the money is being placed under my pillow like i'm not gonna feel that well i guess i didn't because my dad did it but <laughs> what i did True. think of what I, what I did think of was the dog why doesn't he bark for all this stuff and then and then i'm looking at my dad he's sitting there on the couch and he looks over at my mom and he goes is it time <laughs> <laughs> my mom, my mom, telling. my mom looks over at him and she's like, I don't know. And then he goes, he pats the the sofa, have a seat, son. And I'm like, okay. Hmm. And, and this is funny. So, so he sits me down for the talk. Find out it's him, Tooth Fairy. And so, of course, my next thing is like, well, what about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny? And so, okay, that was true. Do you know what my next thing was? What about God? <laughs> wow. So God isn't real? And then, and then the, my Christian parents are like, well, no, 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 that's real. I was like, oh, interesting. Uh, and, I, and now I would say uh, I have God is a bit different. <clears throat> I like but, that. I like this. But it's similar in the sense that, you know, it's this supposed being that sees all and is there and, and, and watches over you and just like these mythological Santa and, and tooth fairies or whatever. But to my young mind, as I just destroy those three, ha, ha, there is no Santa Claus. There's I'm no on a roll. Of, all these things you're telling me. <laughs> what about that God thing you're telling me? The Jesus thing. Where is he? You know, and then they're like, oh, whoa, 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 stop, stop. You've gone too far. And it's like, oh, you can't do that to me. I'm on a roll here. Um, but I've, I've always questioned that as well. And then with, with the God thing, I would say that, see, I don't usually use the word God because I think that word conceptualizes what that thing is into a similar to like the christian version was like in our own image we'll make him in our own image it's this idea that god is a human basically mm. like santa claus or the tooth fairy you've got yeah. to, you conjure images of some kind of supernatural human and so as a kid that's what god was to me as well so, so a supernatural human that i've never seen there, there's the fourth one god so that one obviously doesn't exist too right like no 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 that one does exist now i would say god that concept definitely has more ontological reality <laughs> than the other three than the other three yeah <laughs> but even uh, calling it that and it, it's ineffable the whatever created all of us the prime mover the purposeful creator the intelligent designer these kind of words i think are about the the most specific you can get when you start saying god and you start i think so as well you start yeah. uh, attributing characteristics and attributes to this this guy or you give him a name even, Yahweh, Jehovah, whatever. He's got names now, or he's got a sex, he's a male. Oh, he's a male now? All these things, it's like, you have conceptualized yourself, again, into a box that my young mind was already prying holes in. Just like the Santa Claus things. Well, you've 
this doesn't make sense to me now because it sounds like one of these mythological characters. But say the ancient or Eastern version of God isn't like that. It was more of a principle, like an internal principle that works within everything. It causes the flowers to bloom Definitely. from within. Yeah. It's this kind of thing. So it's so when I think of God, which I will use the term sometimes because it's the most oft used term for this thing, um, I think of it more as an internal spiritual principle or a all pervasive consciousness versus one individual thing that you could point to in it. You know, it's more like the field of consciousness. Oh, I agree. I agree. I like that because um, even in the, you know, use in the English Bible, it says in the beginning um, was the word and the word was with God. But in the Greek Bible, it says in the beginning was the logos mm. and the logos was with God. And that word logos, you could, you know, was so easily translated. They went logos or oh, word. It's a book word. Because if you were to put the original meaning of Logos in the start of the Bible, it would take up a whole chapter on its mm -hmm. own. But Logos means um, order, and I can't even do it. It's a five-page definition. Um, but really quickly, order, reason, logic, um, love, emotion. It's like everything. When Because one without the other just won't work. you got to have it all together. It, the whole Logos had to be constructed um, um, to to be just like the cells, just like um, irreducible complexity, I guess you could mm. call it. Yeah, where one without the other won't work. So, and I guess the same with that. It's a complex topic. There's mm. a really good book though. There's an audio, I did an audio book, Conversations with God. Have you mm -hmm. ever heard? Have you Neil, listened Neil to Neil Donald Walsh. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Because whether you, and I've had people, oh, you can't believe in that. That's anti, you know, antichrist. Or no, I didn't hear anything antichrist in that book. He just made me think differently. He made me question, can God be everything? He can. Can he be a butterfly? Can he be a bee? Yeah, he would. I would. If I was God, I'd want to come down and experience a butterfly and a bee and a you and a me and everything. And Is by definition, real? it's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient, which means Is you that? literally, you literally have to be everything. You have to know everything. You'd have to 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 tell others. To be what? omnipresent, how could you be omnipresent unless you were everywhere? That's the definition of it. So yeah, God yeah. can't be a separate thing beside us that just watches over us. By definition, if God is omnipresent, it must be a principle that is within all things and exists in all places. And that, again, like a dream. So God is like the dreamer. And and so, of course, the dreamer is everywhere because yeah. physicality is an illusion in the first place that happens within the mind of the dreamer. And I would say the entire physical world that we're a part of and our bodies included is all just uh, happening in the mind of God. And it all just seems so is it, real because we're is characters it just a dream? in the dream. I think there was who was that still a song and they start like that? Is this just a dream? Row, the whole row, thing? row your boat yeah. oh, okay. down the stream. <laughs> yeah. Merrily, merrily, oh, merrily, merrily. Life is but a dream. That's true. And I, you know, I love that because you could almost look at the stars and go, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How old? And that's how I look at them now. We right. won't know what they are. They're amazing. They're just, you know, are they beings? Are they, you know, points of light in the sky so we can navigate? Or are they more than that? We don't really know. Yeah. But, um, you know, the, and these fairy tales and all this shit, you know, my, my wife was watching Santa Claus 3 the other day. I just made me think, like, all around this North Pole, and they made the North Pole this fantastical region with Santa Claus and, you know, uh, to keep us away from who, who, who's been to the North Pole. I don't know anyone that's been to the North Pole. We should have thousands of people that have done it physically. I'm taking a photo, a selfie from the North Pole. Yeah, can't be done. What's there? I don't even know. What are your speculations? Do you think it's a... Oh, what yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think at the very least, I think they are hiding something. I won't necessarily say what. Both at the North Pole and beyond Antarctica. Yeah. And the globe is the perfect shape to make us forget about both. Because yeah. on a flat Earth with Polaris, the central non-moving star perfectly above the North Pole which Plum is the bolt, center. Yeah. It's yeah. the center of the flat earth. That is now the most important place on the earth. And then everything, and then the Antarctica is the outer rim, the southern rim. 
And so, of course, you would want to explore to see how far south can you go? Is it truly a rim or is it infinite or, or whatever? How far does it, it go? Is it domed? Is it, you know? Yeah. And so, naturally, if we were given the truth, the North Pole and Antarctica are by far the most significant places on Earth. Everywhere else is just the, the grooves on a record player. Yeah. The North the North Pole is where you put the record. The South yeah. Pole is is the end of the record. Of course, <laughs> yeah. of course, those are the the most uh, intrinsically interesting parts of it that humanity would want to explore. So, how do you take make humanity not want to explore those two significant significant places? You you put it on a sphere. You a it. sphere is the yeah. only shape where there's no there's no points. There is yeah. no significant point on a sphere. And, and then you can say, oh, there's no up and down. So now suddenly the North Pole is just a, it's not the North Pole. It's just a random spot on a sphere. And it's like an antiquated concept that we used to care what the North Pole was because actually the Earth's tilted on its axis, 23 degrees or whatever. And so the North Pole is actually over here. And so, you, oh, maybe you'd want to be at 23 degrees North latitude and that would be uh, a, a more significant... No. Yeah. North Point or whatever. So they play mind games with you. So suddenly, yeah. why? And, and then they show you nothing but guys with icicles on their beards and <laughs> you know seventeen layers. And, and then they, they got frostbite on their frostbite yeah. on their toes. Yeah, they show they show you them. They got like seven toes when they come back. Nobody wants to go to the <laughs> North Pole or Antarctica anymore. When you put those two things together, it's like the Truman Show when he walks into the travel agency and it's got a lightning hitting the. <laughs> it's in the travel agency has got lightning in the airplane. <laughs> no, I'm not going there. Yeah, oh, I'm good. Yeah. Or when he's in school yeah. and they're like, "Sorry, Truman, everywhere's already been explored. For new for you to go." And so his his wanderlust, his his spirit for adventure, is crushed from childhood. And that's exactly what NASA does with this shape that they've mm. they've balled the flat Earth up into a sphere so that all places are equally significant or insignificant. So you no longer have an inkling of where to go to to get out of here. Insane. And if you take that back to the Santa Claus analogy, why did my parents lie about Santa right? Claus? For right. control. You would never come up with that. If I was yes. a kid, if I was a kid, I would never think of like, well, why did they lie? Even the real answer now gets to me. It's like, so why did they do it? Because why why? they wanted better, they wanted to have they wanted my, the they they call it something control. about magic. Well, maybe they, maybe that's even subconscious. But when, when I what? when I talk to them about it now, they say that they wanted me to experience the magic of believing in so it's right. like Disney stuff. I wonder if it's NASA will say the same man, thing actually. when we all figure it out. Is, when we all I'm figure it out, I'm and NASA kids, man. NASA pats the sofa and they're like, "Sit down, kids." Is NASA going to be like? We wanted you to experience the magic of the globe Earth. We didn't want you to know reality because we didn't want you to we grow up too to soon. We wanted you to have fun with to being work a child. It out yourself, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I've, had, I've got three kids, and you know, when they were young, it was handy. Santa Claus came in handy. It's like go to bed, otherwise Santa Claus won't bring you presents and all That's that the sort real of stuff. So you become a real control yeah, but, freak with it, you know. Oh, you, you use better be that good, all the time. Santa You're gonna get cold. Yeah, yep, you're gonna get cold right. this summer. Right. Santa's watching. There's a to-do list, good and bad. I think, I think that's the reason that parents sort of continue and you know that mm. is like but the the ones that have come up with this story, whoever came up mm. with this, Santa, it is a, there's a far in-depth reason. And you know, I've seen you know Saint Nicholas and all this, you know, crazy stuff about that he would kidnap children and whatever. Mm. And, you know, back the original Saint mm. Nicholas or whatever it was, and Krampus. Um, there was, there was like an Krampus evil aspect and, of it. Yeah, Krampus, it was a yeah. real evil aspect, was it? Wasn't it? And um, but you, nothing they do is for one reason. People go, "Why the lie?" It's not a single faceted lie. I don't think there's a single faceted answer to that question because there's multiple reasons behind it. Um, and even could money be part of it? I think so as well. There, you know, what are they? You know, they're using this money to do black ops operations. We're just not spending it up there. What are you doing with it? You drilling well, down there? Similar to how you said, it's not about the money because they, they print the money. Yes, but similar to, like, say, a drug, deal, drug dealer, they have to have their front business so that they, they make their money one okay. way. 
but then they have to have a front business to funnel the money through, which is what I think the, these NASA and other black budgets do. You have to have some, so, some legit, legitimate shop, a laundry legitimate there, reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And I think that's what, what they're doing, because you can't just print it and pocket it right from the mint. you got to have some you know, LL, uh, corporation set up so that you can funnel it in and have it make sense. So yeah. it is it is about the money, certainly. And then distribute it evenly between all the people that are involved and, you know, all the people that are, you know, even from the space station. How much money have they siphoned even for the to the guy who makes a toilet or the toilet seat? And the nuclear right. one's another huge one. The The amount of money they spend trying to get rid of nuclear waste, they got to put it in these titanium cylinders and dig like a hundred feet down into the ground and then you know they, they have all, all these procedures and and people with high paying jobs and, and high that's high paid instrument yeah. and the same like the medical field right like i said that's the wow. number three industry and then you, you got weapons oil and medical all of those they are uh pumped up into being way more valuable than they are for instance oil second most profitable industry in the world why because it's like water the stuff's free. They just drill yeah. deep enough, and then you can suck it out indefinitely. I mean, seemingly so, obviously, right? They say they claim it's dinosaur bones, but that's not what we see. We no, see an indefinite saying, yeah. resource that lasts billions of people for hundreds of years, and there's just more and more of it coming out all the time. Yeah, so, the second most primary yeah. liquid on Earth is what someone has pointed out to be, and they just right. it's popping it's popping out of the Sahara Desert on its own. I've seen videos where it's just like this stuff is um, self-generating. You could say is water. I don't know. Yeah, water isn't. I don't know. I'm maybe going too far there. Yeah, we can't say for sure, but it seems that oil, it, similar to seawater, is a huge self-generating uh, system that exists mm. under the earth. Yeah, but when I said self-generating, I thought is it self-generate or it's just like perpetual? Just like uh, yeah. yeah, is there Sorry, some cycle? We're, we're not sure. Yeah, we we're couldn't say. Sure, but yeah. but but what doesn't make sense is that it's a finite resource uh, based on some animals that died 65 million years yeah. ago or something. That's These just mammals ridiculous. have got compressed into some area and they just all now, you can right. find that animal. Find that area spot. where they all died. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Just yeah. crazy thought. And, uh, you know, I think when we move, Flat Earth's going to break down a lot of this stuff. And that's the beauty about it. And that's what it's doing. That's what it's yeah. done. Because everyone that happening. dives into, yeah, everyone that dives into flat Earth just, to, you know, it's like a, a tentacles just stick to every. It's like boom, that, <laughs> that, grab that, and you just, you know, start researching so many different topics. And um, as we said before, it's unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely unstoppable. 